We're just about ready for the command to start the engines to get these 43 cars and drivers underway for 500 laps of competition at Bristol. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the words we've all been waiting for, the Grand Marshal of tonight's race from Winn-Dixie, Mr. Dennis Johns. Gentlemen, start your engines! It was here in the spring that Indiana native Tony Stewart served notice that he was no ordinary rookie. After qualifying fourth, he reeled in pole center Rusty Wallace and took the lead on lap 198. Now he would falter to finish 15, but that night he set the stage for what would happen one week later, his first Western Cup pole, and what could happen tonight, his first Western Cup win. Without a doubt, this rookie team and this rookie driver have gained experience and confidence since that day in April four months ago. But will it be enough? to be able to counter fellow front row starter and seven time Bristol winner, Rusty Wallace. No one in a long time has dominated the concrete high banks like Rusty did in the spring. But whether it's Rusty or the rookie or the 41 that will follow the flag, whoever visits victory lane tonight at Bristol will have done it the old fashioned way. They will have earned it. When it comes to short tracks, it seems that long shots have a slim chance of a big win. Half of the top 20 qualifiers in this race have never been to victory lane. And only eight of the 43 starters have won here. Bristol is a buffet of potential trouble. Traffic, constant turns, a tiny pit road and tiny pit stalls. The past is proof that experience is Bristol's greatest enemy, but its new foe could be the future. Kenny Wallace, Mike Skinner, Jerry Nadeau, Michael Waltrip, Chad Little and Todd Bodine lead a long list of well-known names, hoping that the night race at Bristol could be their biggest night. Dale Jarrett has pointed at the Bristol Motor Speedway as one of the biggest threats to this year's championship run because you can't control your own destiny here. The one thing he did have control over was qualifying, and he wound up a disappointing 25th. So he'll pit on the backstretch where it's nearly impossible to win. You better believe the 88 team will consider it a moral victory if it can survive tonight and wind up in the top 10. We've been setting speed records in NASCAR Winston Cup recently. We didn't set one here this weekend, but it is the closest field in history with the fastest to the slowest separated by less than a quarter of a second. ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, and the National Association of Stock Car Auto Racing welcome you to Bristol and to tell you that we have an exciting evening lined up for you. The all Walmart ever start grid. Tony Stewart on the pole, his second pole of 99. Rusty Wallace won the spring race here from the pole. Kenny Wallace, his best start of the 1999 season, sixth at Martinsville. Jeff Gordon has won the last four spring races. Ward Burton was ninth in the spring race here, and Mike Skinner was seventh in that event. Mark Martin is the defending race champion. Jerry Nadeau substitutes for Ernie Irvin. Terry Labonte won this race in 84 and 95. Sterling Marlin has 10 Bristol top 10s. Kenny Irwin finished 11th this spring. Robert Presley, his two best starts of 99 are here. 11th in the spring and 12th here tonight. We'll take a look at the rest of the starting grid. Let's talk about this racetrack specifically. Talk about how dangerous it is. Well, the banks are at 36 degrees, Ned. And they run very, very fast around here as a result of that. Qualifying a little over 15 seconds. They'll run a little over 16 seconds in the race itself here tonight. That's why it's so easy to get in trouble. And every car that qualified is within one quarter of a second of the pole sitter, Tony Stewart. The entire field within a quarter of a second. That's how tight the competition is. Three of these drivers qualified at exactly the same time and speed, and the top three were separated by the blink of an eye. Nine one thousandths of a second. All of these back in the, this area have their work cut out, hitting on the backstretch from 22nd on back will be hitting on the backstretch. Here are the drivers that Tech Provisionals to get in with Steve Brisson driving the number nine car tonight. Joe Nemechek and Hutt Strickland also in a provisional, and Dave Marcus will have the 43rd and final starting position for tonight's event. 
and two cars and drivers were unable to make the field and went home. Dick Trickle and Rich Bickle. A host of onboard cameras for you tonight. Wally Dallin back, what Budweiser back in 27th. Dale Jarrett starts in 25th. Bill Elliott, the McDonald's on board in 23rd spot. Bobby Labonte, the Circuit City on board camera. He will start in 21st. And Todd Bodine, the Bryant Foods on board camera. He starts in the 20th position. Sterling Marlin, the Coors Light on board in 10th. And we're coming down for the green flag to start. And the green is out. The Goodies Headache Powder 500 is underway. And Rusty Wallace is going to beat Tony Stewart to the first turn by a whole bunch. He did. He kept waiting for Tony to accelerate. And Tony was a little bit slow getting on it. And Rusty took off. Winston Cup history to win 50 events. He has 49 in his portfolio right now. No contact on the car into the wall. It's Robert Presley. He was one of two cars. Michael Walter put the other and was caught up on the outside. No caution yet because he continues on around at a slow pace because it is out now. So it didn't take long, just two laps, and we have an incident up in turn number one involving Robert Presley with considerable to the right side of the car. That's th the 77 car is Robert Preston. That's Kenny Schrader that's trying to go by on the inside and right there we see the contact and wow, hard contact in the wall by Preston. And he's taking the Jasper into his transmission board back behind the wall to do the repairs. So a caution is out here at Bristol Motor Speedway with Rusty Wallace leading Tony Stewart after four laps. ESPN's live coverage of the Goodies Headache Powder 500 from Bristol Motor Speedway being brought to you by Everstart Battery. All the cold cranking power your truck, car, boat, or mower will ever need. Available at Walmart. By Daytona USA, the official attraction of NASCAR. And by Bryant, the flavor of the South, proud sponsor of car number 30. Caution is out. We'll go down to Bill Weber. Well, Robert Presley is out of the car. The car is already behind the wall, badly damaged, especially the right front suspension, the rear end pushed over. What happened, Robert? I just went off in one there and uh, thought we was clear, but we wasn't. Doesn't take long here at Bristol, does it? No, you know, at the start of the race, you just want to be real cautious and just get it going. I mean, I hate this jazz friend who was fast in practice, been fast since we unloaded, but okay, you ain't going to run top 10 sitting back here. Well, he's very disappointed, not only because they had such a good qualifying run, but they did feel they had a very good car here tonight. This is why this track will break your heart. It will tease you in qualifying and crush you in the race. Just about to go green coming up after our coverage of this race. This is the time of year where there's baseball, golf, college football, racing, of course, and you will get all the report on SportsCenter coming up at the conclusion of coverage of the Goodies Heading Powder 500. And these overhead shots courtesy of the Pennzoil Copter Cam flying over in the nearly crystal clear skies here at Bristol. Just a few white puffy clouds are floating overhead this evening. A beautiful night for racing. Pace car is coming off the uh, racetrack. As the crowd cheers the green flag, it drops once again with Rusty again. Going to get a pretty good jump on Tony Stewart. Tenth position. So let's put Kenny Irwin in that spot and move Sterling Marlin back to 11th. And Jeff Gordon now begins to close in on second place, Tony Stewart. So evidently, Rusty Wallace's Miller Light car starting to slow down just a little bit. It's allowed Tony Stewart to come up and challenge the lead. And now Jeff Gordon's game on this twosome. Last lap, Jeff Gordon was the
the fastest around the racetrack at 107.805. Rusty ran a 117.036. That third car in line, that fourth car rather in line, is Kenny Wallace, and Kenny Irwin picks up another position. So we're seeing some passing early here at the back of the field. Jeremy Mayfield, in fact, he's going into the pits right now. He had gone all the way to the back. He is pitted on the back stretch. John Kernan, what's going on with Jeremy? Jeremy had a bad vibration. Then he thought it had a tire going down. Left side tires look okay. They've already put on right side tires. The left side now going on. Left the second team in back. He had a tire going down. Possibly could have been a loose one in front, but they didn't. He had a tire going down. Up front, they continue to run in the same order. We talked about patience at the top of the show. Tony Stewart right now has a better race car, but he must be patient. He must wait for that perfect opportunity to try to pass. Oh, we see Steve Grissom on the outside there with the Bobby Hamilton automobile. And look how close it is between the leader and uh, the 50 car of Craven who's running last. About a half a straightaway is all that is separating the first from the last. Stewart trying to work on Rusty. I understand it was a right rear tire on Jerry Mayfield. He is two laps down to the leaders. And in fact, he's at the back of the pack. He's the first car that they would catch. What they do to catch up to the field. They put 43 cars on the half mile track. And Picking up about half a track when you get the single foul. There's a 36 of Jerry Nadeau. For those of you who haven't been with us, the other programs that we've done here at Bristol, Ernie Irvin is still on the men. Jerry Nadeau is filling in in the 36 car, but he's on the outside of the uh, the high groove, and that means a loss of position. He's lost one to Sterling Marlin. Now here comes Ken Schrader and Jeffrey Bodine will also go by. Well, once you get up on that high side, this car's running bumper to bumper behind him as Stewart tries to make a move once again, but couldn't quite get it done. Is just all over Rusty, but passing is not easy at this point. And besides that, as Benny and Ned have said, patience. He's going to worry Rusty Walsh to death. <laughs> I think Rusty just uh, said, okay, you want to go that bad, go ahead. He keeps pulling out, keeps pulling out. That's kind of a signal to tell Rusty Walsh, look, Rusty, I'm faster than you are. Just got a little loose. He's back in seventh position. Got loosened up by the 28 car. Uh, Kenny Irwin. Irwin now in seventh. Yep. Moved up to seven. He's moving run long. Started back in 11th. Has some good race cars. And here it is once again. Oh, little tap. Yeah, just a little bit. A little bit again. Got him out of shape. Ooh, very out of shape. Man, that was a great job by Mike Skinner to keep that Lowe's car under control. A great job. And now here's the battle for ninth position. Sterling Marlin tries to go to the inside of Mike Skinner and does. And a change up front. Tony Stewart takes the lead. And Jeff Gordon tried to go by, but Rusty closed the door on that. Tony Stewart has led in 1999. He led at Michigan last week, and now we see Elliott Sadler and the 25 car from whom we look back to Sadler. That, of course, is Wally Dolan back, and this is the battle for the 27th spot. Kevin Page is trying to get on the inside, and you can go to the battle for second spot. Jeff Gordon takes the DuPont Chevrolet into second spot. He's pulled away by about six car lengths. And now Jeff Gordon sets his sights on the leader. Tony Stewart, who has about a half second lead at the moment, and 30 laps already in the books here at Bristol Motor Speedway. It's Wallace, Ward Burton, and Kenny Wallace, the top five. Welcome back to the Goodies Headache Powder 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Bristol Motor Speedway. An incredible sight from the copter cam, the Pennzoil copter cam. 
seeing the 141,000 people who have gathered here on this beautiful Saturday evening for this race. Well, the leader is Tony Stewart, and he led uh, 55 laps here in April, has now led the last 12. He is beginning to lap some of the slower cars. He's already by Hut Strickland, putting him a lap down in 41st position. But Mike Skinner has been having problems. He's going backwards. Jerry Punch has an update. Well, I just talked to Larry McReynolds a moment ago, and Larry just sort of took his shoulders and shrugged them up alongside of his head, so we're not really sure. All we know is the car is loose all the way in through the middle and through the exit of the corner. So obviously here at Bristol, if you're that loose, you can't use much throttle, and you're going to be dropping back in a hurry. And he is doing that already back to 21st position. One concern that these drivers have is all the practice qualifying has been done in the daytime. And some of them would think that as it as they rush race into the night as it cools off, these cars will get tighter. So Mike Skinner might start the race a little bit looser than they'd want to, thinking that weather would take care of him. But unfortunately, he has to last. On board with Mike, and he does have his hands full. Well, he's really saw that wheel Bill Elliott and Dale Jarrett just went by. And Harry has more. Benny, you hit the nail on the head. Last night, a lot of these Western Cup crew members sat and listened to the Bush Grand National drivers comment on as the sun went down and it got cooler here. The track got tighter and tighter. In particular, they heard Matt Kenton's comment about how, how tight his car got. And with that anticipation, a lot of guys late in happy hour made changes to be able to loosen their cars up and they may be paying the price here in the early lap. He loses a position to John Andretti and now loses another to Elliott Sadler. Meanwhile, Tony Stewart continues to thread his way through traffic, but Jeff Gordon has not let him get out of his sights. And that traffic is heavy. Joe Nemechek there running in the 38th position, trying to hold on to the lead lap. Tony Gordon. has already lapped uh, Dave Marcus and Ricky Craven in addition to Hutch Rickley. But traffic in front of them. This is where it really gets tough, and this is where you really have to show patience. There is Jeff Burton, who is uh, moving up through the field also. He's back in 30th spot right now, and Jeff Burton started 37th, so he's gained seven positions. On board with Wally Dollenbach, who runs in the 30th spot. Jeffrey is 29th now. now. Yep. And there's Mike Skinner right in front of him. And Rusty Wallace, as they try to get by Nemechek, he's closed up on the back bumper of Jeff Gordon. Well, Nemechek is just not giving Tony Stewart any. Oh, yeah. Now, finally, Tony Stewart gets on the inside. And Nemechek will now go a lap down in that Bell South Chevy. And Jerry Punch has more on Rusty Wallace, who's in third. Guys, today in happy hour, I talked to Robin Pember, and he said the big problem they had was after about 30 laps or so, the car would get tight in the middle of the corner and get loose coming off. Well, at lap 20, the car began to get loose coming off, and now they have both the problems, tight in the middle and loose off. So Rusty has trouble getting back in the throttle like he would like. He tries to go by Nemechek now. He can't bury his foot in that throttle coming up off the corner like he would like to. Well, he is able to get by Nemechek, but all this uh, laughing traffic has allowed Mark Martin to close right up. Oh, and then we see Jerry May doing the M&M's car going a lap down after a great qualifying run. They missed the setup early on. He's on the high side of the track as several pass by underneath him. That's Steve Grissom in the nine car that Tony Stewart just went by. Grissom got a little bit loose going off turn two. Side by side, Kevin LePage puts Mike Skinner down another position, and Skinner has slid clear back to 31st, and here, here is a Kyle Petty trying to take another spot away. And the leader is not far behind them. You can see him coming into the picture there, so they're fighting to stay on the lead lap. There's Tom That track is just a couple of seconds behind. A lot of crew chiefs, a lot of drivers right now, like Mike Skinner said, come on, caution flag. Where's the piece of debris? Somebody throw something. Well, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but they really want a caution flag to get in, makes the judgments on the lead lap. Johnny Benson just ahead of the leader, Tony Stewart now, running back in 35th spot. Johnny 
Benson in the 26 car trying to stay on the lead lap. He is in 35th position. Even Jack again caught on the outside. There's Dale Earnhardt who's back in 13th position. So he's, he's moved up. Yes, he has. He started in 26th position. So he has picked off half of the cars they started in front of. Well, Robert Presley crashed, but uh, other than that, he's passed 12 race cars and about to pass another one. That's Kenny Walsh who qualified inside the second row in third spot. So Dale Earnhardt and Kenny Schrader trying to make their way to the front. It's an Apple Field summary with the manufacturer's battle. And Wallace gets shoved out of the groove. And Kenny Schrader goes by him. And we go back to this situation that has the top runners trying to move through the slow traffic but they're being very patient at least at this point. Yes they are. They need to be. And if you go into this race with that in mind I have to be patient. And Mike Skinner he's up on the outside. He's going to get some this on the inside. I think the train will go by with the leaders down on the inside and go that down. And all that patience will last for about 100 laps and then it all go away. <laughs> Well, a tough evening for Mike Skinner so far as he started back in the sixth position, but now has dropped all the way back to 34th. This is Sterling Marlin, the course light Chevrolet. He is currently in fifth position as he tries to catch up with Mark Martin, but he's about two seconds behind Mark Martin. Dave Marcus is 71, real three car up in front. Also, just ahead of Dave Marcus. Let's go to see Dave Marcus gives him the signal on the inside. I'm going up high and give you the room. Talk about people that are moving up. Bobby Labonte has moved up to seventh position from his 21st starting position. So Bobby Labonte is on the there he is. There he is. Down on the inside. He's right behind the sixth place car, Jeffrey Bodine, the power team car. Bobby Devine might be one of the fastest cars on the race car. Coming through traffic and moving on that. Of course, he has the advantage of, of the leaders being in that you know, heavy lap traffic, but he's catching some of it himself now. And Lamonti is driving a backup car here tonight. He crashed in practice prior to qualifying yesterday. Backup car is running well for him. 65 laps have been completed. We'll check the speeds as they cross the line and see who's the fastest out there. Stewart right now, Marlin second, and well, make that Dale Jarrett now the third quickest out there. Marlin is second, and Jarrett is third quick, running back in 18th spot. He started 25th, so he's picked off seven positions. So that lap that Jeff Gordon was a little bit quicker than Tony Stewart. 11.8 compared to Stewart's 111.5. There is Jarrett. That's a bit to Brett Bodine. Brett is running in 17th position. Good to see Brett running up there in the top 20. And a lot of traffic right up there in front of them. Let's see Kenny Irwin trying to get on the inside of Chad Little. Brett. Dale Jarrett goes on the inside of Brent Bodine and takes over 17. Kenny Wallace, you already mentioned that his car not to his liking because he started up near the front there, but now he's. Uh, Fighting for 16th position to hold on to 16th position. And the leader, Tony Stewart, closing in now on Wally Dollar back and look at the closing ring. The great racetrack right now looks like Tony Stewart is still the quickest car last time. A little bit faster than Jeff Gordon. That time Rusty Walsh was quicker, but that's because the Tony Stewart is now. Caught up behind the 25 car, but he disposes of Wally Dollar back, puts him a lap down.
means that 30 cars are now in the lead lap as Donovan runs in the third first spot. So far, Rusty Wallace has led 47 of the 73 laps that have been completed so far. Jeff Gordon is running second, followed by Rusty Wallace. Mark Martin is fourth, and Stuart is in the fifth position. You're watching live coverage of the Goodies Heading Powder 500 from Bristol Motor Speedway. We'll be right back. For some, it's a great night of racing. For some, it's a nightmare. And it has turned sour for the points leader, Dale Jarrett. He's been involved in a crash that involves several cars. It began Got a big out hole of in the right door. And we're hearing Bob Jeffries, the uh, spotter for Dale Jarrett, describe the damage. We are in the lead lap. Here's a replay of what happened. Coming off turn two, we see DJ there just comes off the corner. He was trying to get underneath the five car and nail the gas and got it out of pro control. We start that hospital wobble and back and forth, back and forth. And now he goes back across the racetrack. I was hoping he wouldn't do that, but here comes Elliot, bam, right in the side of that. We see Jeremy, Bobby Hamilton, Elliot Sadler, and John Andretti, and also the 58 car. On board with DJ. Bill Elliott must have got on board, McDonald's on board. He's hoping he'll stay up there, but maybe he comes right out in front of Bill Elliott. Bill had nowhere to go. Pits are open, here's Bill Weber. Bobby Labonte on pit lane, he has been faster than the leader. He was loose off a few laps ago. They talked about wedge or air pressure adjustments, decided to make no adjustments. Pit road very tight, we'll have to be very cautious getting out. Rights are on, lefts are going on, and he has a 30 in front of him, 18 almost done. He's on his way, has to back up to Jerry Gunn. Left side tires on Tony Stewart's car, great pit stop. Ian Gordon now going out. Rusty Wallace made a track bar adjustment. Air pressure in the left and right side tires. Let's go to the back of John Turner. Dale Jarrett has pulled in. The word is two tires only. Right side tires only. They're also going to have to pull the fender off that right rear tire and check things out to make sure the suspension is OK. Dale Earnhardt is down and away after his service. There's also a hole ripped in the right side of the door. And they're looking at that, pulling out that right rear fender, taking a lot of time, waiting, waiting. They just hear, let's guys. go, guys. And DJ will be down and away. And just he will be coming back down pit road for some more service. But Dale did tell the team when we went we were away at commercial break said, guys back. it was my fault i got down too low on the apron dale has had the points lead since richmond in may since then he's gained an average of 23 points per race that i believe the steering wheel's tonight. okay todd i think that was this uh, from replay. my flat tire and as we watch that replay we listen to Dale Jarrett talk to his crew. I was hoping the car would stay on the apron there on the racetrack, but he just couldn't do it. Back across the racetrack, right in front of Elliott, and we see the other four cars involved. He had slid past the inside wall on the back stretch, and at that point had not hit anything, but again, it slid up right in the path of traffic. John? Dale Jarrett is back in to continue looking at that right side now, trying to put something over that hole to tape over the uh, hole in the right side door. They've already changed left side tires. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And Dale said he thought the car was basically okay. Believe it or not, after all that, he says he thinks the suspension is all right on the car. Well, he has stayed on the lead lap, but he has lost a lot at track position and has a damaged race car. 82 laps completed at Bristol Motor Speedway. We're back to racing here at Bristol Motor Speedway. That is Jerry Nagu. 36 car. He has gotten his lap back on the restart at the moment. He's running in 28th position. The leader remains Tony Stewart. There's Jeff Gordon running in second. Rusty is third. Mark Martin fourth. And Sterling Marlin is fifth. The 99 car, Jeff Burt, is a lap down. You're going into the corner. 30th position. We hear Dale Jarrett talking to his crew. He is complaining about something wrong with the car. So it wasn't just sheet metal damage. He does have a chassis problem. Well, to hit the trailing arm on the rear when uh, Elliott hit the wheel there, which he had no choice. Down to John Kernan. What they're saying now, the, they're what asking... What are you feeling now, Dale? What feeling right now? Get my car sideways going into the corner. But they 
saw some sparks from the car in the corner earlier, right after they went back to green, and they thought it might have been, they said maybe the jack stop might have been dragging. Well, he is all over the racetrack. It's hard to keep that car going straight. Even here, 400 yep. more left trying to keep up with this thing and get as many points as he possibly can. 19 consecutive top 10 finishes coming into the event tonight. Back up front, there is Tony Stewart leading uh, Jeff Gordon by better than a second now. While we were playing, Jeff Gordon tried to pass Tony Stewart. They made a little contact on turn four. I wonder if Jeff Gordon has bent a tie rod on the right front because right now, Tony Stewart is pulling away from him. I just wonder if that contact bent something yep. in the suspension. His car has not, it seems, been the same since that incident. He's continued to drop back. Although he's staying ahead of Weston Wallace, who is in third place, and Mark Martin, those two cars right there just went back. Again, those two cars right behind Jeff, Skinner and Burton, are both a lap down. On board with Mark Martin, he looks ahead to Rusty Wallace, up in third. And Benny, here is what we're Ray. talking about. This uh, little contact between Tony and Jeff. Right there. And see that right front makes contact. I just wonder if he might have bent something on the 24 car. Doesn't take much. Well, he's dropped back uh, almost one and a half seconds now. For that attempted pass. Whoops, and he gets hit by the 36 car. There is Jared. Jerry Nadu hit him coming off right, the turn. Yeah, I'm okay. Hey, rear in rear in house, rear in house, rear in house. Oh, guys, no. go behind the wall, Dale. Yeah. Go behind the wall. The rear end housing vent, they'll have to put one under it. Hey, bring it down here and come around the, uh, come around the wall. This is something that they don't have to put together. I saw them putting it together by. this afternoon. It's the entire rear end assembly, including the trailing arms. The crew's bringing it out right now. This is just one of the things we're going to Okay, guys. Rear end housing crew go on the rear, on channel two. Go to channel two. Rear end housing crew. And they had this ready to go, so uh, they wouldn't have to waste any time. This is just one of the things that you have to prepare for here at the Bristol Motor Speedway, especially when you're in the battle for the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship. And they know who the rear end housing crew is going to be. Yeah. That's the amazing thing. Yeah. I'd put about 50 people on it, but they know exactly. <laughs> now they're trying to get the car positioned as close as they can to the toolbox. Bill Elliott is down there. Uh... He's behind the wall, close to where Dale is. Here comes DJ, finally getting down to where the... Drive again, two guys. That's amazing. They have a, their own group of, uh, <laughs> of guys specially trained for this operation. To the penalty box goes Jerry Nadu. When they got his lap back, he, was, he had fought and was running in front of Tony Stewart. But now they're in changing tires, and they say he's in the penalty box. See how long they hold him. Apparently they're going to hold it for two laps. See the NASCAR official standing in front of the car. And when they finish the four tire, whoop, stop right there. Don't wait place. Here's a replay as to why he is in the penalty box. Coming off of turn four. Mm. DJ had tried to move down to the inside and get out of the way. He knew they were coming. Still being held there. This seems like an hour, doesn't it? Yes, it does. He worked so hard to get him that back. And the work is underway in the Jared garage area, so to speak. And from his onboard camera, we'll get a replay of this most recent incident. Watch Jerry Nadu come up from behind. NASCAR official says looks like he's ready to wave him out 
as soon as the field goes by and uh, there are still a few more cars to uh, come down the front straight away. John Kernan. Dale Jarrett's crew going to work on his car. And Dale, this was one of the things you were worried about here at Bristol. Yeah, they happened, but uh, I created all of it. Uh, the car uh, just got away from me coming off of two. I was trying to make a pass and I got down on the apron and uh, got it sideways and created a problem for some other people and myself. And then it bent the rear end and it just in the way there. So uh, that's my fault. Dale Jarrett behind the wall. The last nine races at Bristol, Dale Jarrett's finishes were all in the top six, including seven top fives. Back with more in a moment. Already more than 20% of this race is over. The green has been out for one lap. Tony Stewart is still the leader, and a couple of flat cars once again position themselves between Tony and second place, Jeff Gordon. Carolyn Marlin tried to go on the inside of Rusty Wallace. And he's already gotten by Mark Martin. He's moved into fourth. This is a battle for third spot. So puts Durham in third position. And here comes Mark Martin down on the inside of Wallace. He'll take over the fourth position. Jeff Gordon has been the man on the move as far as the points are concerned in the last few races. Dale Jarrett has had his problems tonight. Here's more from Dr. Jerry Punch on Gordon. Well, Bob, we saw earlier that contact, that slight contact with the 24 and the 20 car. Now, what happened is that they really can't tell by looking at the car if the right front tire is towed in or towed out. They do know the right front fender is pushed in a little bit. But what Jeff is complaining of is the car is so tight, he cannot get it to turn at all. He says, I am just wearing out this right front tire, and I'm having to run so hard to try to keep the left car behind me. It's even worse. And the race said, just ride it out so we can get a caution flag, get in and get it fixed. Take a look at that right front, but a very, very tight car number 24. Well, they just had a caution flag, and you wonder why didn't he come in? Because folks cannot afford to give up that much track position. You can't go back to 26 and ask Jeff Gordon to wait his way back through that traffic. It's just too difficult. Ricky Rudd is between Jeff Gordon and the third place car of Sterling Marlin. The five and the 60 just got together, battling for the 10th position. Jeffrey Bodine inside of Terry Labonte and some big contact. Boy, that looked like that 77 car of Robert Preston and Kenny Schrader all over again. As Michael Walter goes by the five car. Michael, two lap down? No. No. Kenny Irwin and Kevin LePage. For the 18th position, Kyle Petty is also right there. The Napa Field summary, the points as of now. Jared, of course, with a comfortable lead in the point standings, if there is such a thing with this many races to go. 314 points separating Jared and Mark Martin. And Kyle Petty sneaks to the inside of the page. Everybody in the top 10 maintains their position at this point. The big gainer earlier in the race is Sterling Marlin, who's up four positions. That 30 car, if again you have not been with us in our previous telecast from Bristol or haven't been on RPM tonight, Derek Cope has been released from the ride and on board tonight is Todd Bodine. So we have three Bodines in the field tonight for the first time since the last race of 1998. Oh, oh contact. contact. And Bodine way down on the apron, but he's safe. It. Kenny Irwin's guy I thought was going to lose control because it looked like he was going in the first corner like he was on dirt, but he did a good job, saved it. Now, Todd Bodine takes that spot away. That will be the 19th position for Todd Bodine. Well, there's some heavy racing going on in this pack. Aaron Bacon is going to number 12. He's three laps down. But he, since he had that unscheduled stop, he's run pretty well, hasn't he? 25 cars just behind this group. That's Ricky Freeman just up ahead of Wally Dolan back. Ricky Freeman, the 50 car, the Midwest Transit car. He and Jeremy right side by side. And Ricky has a lap down. Darrell Waltrip to the extreme right of your screen. He is running in 23rd position. 
Waltrip with more victories here than any other driver. He has visited victory lane 12 times here at Bristol. There's a leader, and he's all by himself out there. Yes, he is. Well, that's the place you want to be here at Bristol. No one close to you behind you fighting you. No one too, you're not too close to anyone that you're catching up to. And check it out. He's two seconds ahead of the second place car, Jeff Gordon. At Bristol Motor Speedway, two seconds is an eternity, it seems like. We're around here in 16 seconds. So that's an eighth of a lap. Will Tony Stewart be able to win a NASCAR Winston Cup race in his rookie season? That's what everybody is speculating on. Certainly a, a good opportunity here for him tonight. There's the interval between first and second. The last time that a rookie won in his rookie season was Davey Allison. He won two races, as a matter of fact, back in 1987. He won at Talladega, and he also won at Dover. And besides that, Morgan Shepard also won in his rookie year. So did Ron Bouchard. Dale Earnhardt in 79. Earl Ross and dating all the way back to 1958. Shorty Rollins won in his rookie year. Dale Jarrett, the points leader in NASCAR Winston Cup racing with a problem here tonight. He's 38th and behind the wall. John Kernan has an update. Bob, they've got the old rear end assembly they are putting in the new one right now. Now, this is the left side rear trailing arm. Look at how nice and straight it is. Now, come over here and look at the right side. This is what happened. They bent the trailing arm. What that did is brought the right rear tire upwards, making that right, the rear end want to turn the car into the corners. DJ, we heard him say several times he was about ready to wreck the car. Well, that's exactly why. goes on as they try to replace and you know they can they can change that rear housing almost as fast as they can change that single trailing arm let's check our on track interval between Tony Stewart and Jeff Ford and see what's happening and we see that Tony Stewart is wide in the gap between himself and Jeff Ford just a half second but every little bit helps Moved it up to 2.1 seconds on lap 129, but now on lap 136, the interval is again down below two seconds. As a matter of fact, it's 1.6 seconds. So Gordon's about as close now as he's been in the last few laps. And Sterling Marlin is in third spot, doing well. And in fourth is Mark Martin and Bobby Labonte, the teammate of Tony Stewart, is up to fifth. He started 21st. Ricky Rudd, who is back in 27th position, a lap down, but right behind Ricky is Sterling Marlin. Two and a half seconds behind the leader, but running the fastest lap, that last lap, at over 112.6 miles an hour. But again, the man on the move on the racetrack is the 18 of Bobby Labonte. There he is. Passed Rusty Wallace a few laps ago for the fifth position. He is running about five and a half seconds behind his teammate, Tony Stewart. You can see the progress that he's made. He's just made a lot of progress. More on that, Bill Weber. Oh, that he's had a fantastic night. Early in this race, Bobby Labonte said his race car was loose off the turns. But they talked about making changes during this pit stop. We told him they decided not to make the changes. Well, the car went back out and suddenly it tightened up a little bit. Now Bobby seems to be happy with the car and happy with the progress they've made to this car. Bobby Labonte, it's interesting, has led every race this year except the two road course races and the first race here at Bristol. Back up front, Tony Stewart now is in heavy traffic once again as he tries to hang on to the lead and move through the slower cars. That's Ted Musgrave just ahead of the 75 car running in 24th position. You see the points now. They've been shaved from a 314 point advantage to 203 Jarrett over Martin. Ted Musgrave going a lap down. He's in 24th position. And right now Rusty Wallace is really struggling in that middle right light forward because Dale Earnhardt just goes by him and takes over that the sixth position. Let's go on board with Rusty Wallace for a taste of the race and check out his telemetry and see what kind of speed and RPM he's turning as he accelerates down the straightaway. 
just 8,400 RPMs. You would expect if this car was up to speed, it would be somewhere around 8,800 to 9,000 RPMs. And just shy of 130 miles an hour at the end of the straightaway before the brakes come on. This 36 degrees banking doesn't it doesn't look like they're banked that much when you're looking out to the windshield windshield there. Harry Punch has more on Rusty. Well, despite the fact that they made a track bar adjustment and also made an air pressure adjustment in the right front and left front, Rusty uh, just came on the radio a moment ago and told Rob Pemberton, tight in the middle, tight in the middle. So obviously he's still having that same problem he had early on, getting the car to turn, but in the very middle of the corner. Check his speed and how it compares to everybody else. Gordon, the fastest that lap with uh, Steve Park. Well, look at Michael Waltrip. Wow. I think that 123 is a little bit of a stretch there. So it's and the nine car of Steve Grissom is in the wall. Sliding across the banking up in turn number three, bringing out another caution. Our fourth of the evening. And it looks like it's going to be a one car crash. Don't see any other cars involved, but that is gasoline. It could be gasoline that he's leaving a string behind him, and I hope it doesn't spark too much, but maybe it's oil back there. In any case, he has shortened that car up considerably. Let's take a look at it in replay. He is up on the outside, and I don't know if that left front tire was flat when we saw him there a moment ago pulling away. Now, I don't know if that was as a result of locking the tire wheels up, probably, and wearing through. Yeah, I think that you know, see the right front is flat as well. Heavy damage to the back of that car. Here are all the leaders coming down pit road to make these pit stops and adjustments. Bill Weber. Bobby, La Bobby Labonte is tight in the middle of the turns, neutral in, neutral off. They're going to take a pound out of each of the right side tires, no other adjustments, then they're going to send it back out. Fill it with fuel, and Bobby Labonte will be on his way to Jerry and Tony Stewart's pit. And they, and they asked Tony what you wanted to do, and Tony said, yeah, clean the windshield. That's all we need to do with this thing. It's that good. Gordon is in behind him. Rusty Wallace making an air pressure adjustment. Gordon is out. Tony is out. And Tony Stewart will win the race to the end of pit road by virtue of his first pit spot. Let's go back to John Kernan. Dale Earnhardt has worked his way up to the sixth spot. He comes in pitting on the back stretch as Tony Stewart, Jeff Gordon, Stewart, and Martin Martin and Bobby Labonte go by. Earnhardt asked his crew for a good stop. He also asked him to make an air pressure adjustment because he was just too tight in the center of the turn. And Earnhardt must have lost about five or six positions on that pit stop by hitting on the back stretch. I think. Well, Rusty needed that caution flag to make some adjustments. See if he can get this Miller Lite Ford going. Although his speed was not as as compared to the other cars, he was not that much slower. A little bit of adjustment might get him back in the game. 152 laps have been completed so far in the Goodies Headache Powder 500 from Bristol. The fans here at Bristol Motor Speedway never cease to amaze us or disappoint us. They are the most enthusiastic fans that we encounter all year on the NASCAR Winston Cup circuit. They are here in droves tonight, 141,000 strong, watching the Goodies Henny Counter Fire If you approach Bristol Motor Speedway at night when it's lit up and you don't know what it is, it looks like a giant spaceship sitting in the hills. <laughs> uh, they got lights all the way around the top of it. It is something to see. The green flag is out, and the Goodies Henny Counter is back under green flag conditions. Mark Skinner will be trying to get a lap back down the inside of Tony Stewart, but Stewart is not Wow, that was close off turn two. There's Skinner. He's right in right now. There's oh, some contact between Marlon and Gordon for second position. Look at the left rear tire on Jim Gordon's car. That Goodyear's completely worn off. Contact with Mainstream. Jerry Punch. Jeff Gordon just shouted left rear, left rear, left rear, and Ray Everton told the crew to get 
tires up on the wall and get ready. Jeff said he may have got the left rear, so he's waiting to hear if it's going to vibrate. That time by, he said, still okay, but I may have to come in, so they're ready to possibly pit an unscheduled stop for the 24th car. So more drama as the night continues to unfold. Lowe's field summary with the manufacturer's points battle. Jeff Gordon, four wins at Bristol. All of them, however, have been during the Sunday afternoon spring race. He's never won under the lights at Bristol. Well, everything appears to be okay. He's uh, pulled away from Marlon a bit. Yeah, I believe it's okay. This car right now, it seems to be running a little bit better than it was compared to the competition. Last time by, Tony Stewart ran 116 cents. Jeff Gordon ran 117 cents. And Jeff is going to move to the inside of Jerry Nadeau here. And if he does and passes him, there will be no cars between himself and the leader. Mike Skinner has gotten his lap back in 27th position. Here again is the contact. Let me see Jeff Gordon and Sterling Marlin right there. Wow. <laughs> on board Sterling Marlin and the course light on board. During the previous caution flag, Ray Everham pulled that right front bumper back out a little bit in fender and skirt on Jeff Gordon's car, said it should be a whole lot better. Then he gave his driver a bad news, good news message. He said, well, Tony Stewart's in a league by himself, because you're better than everybody else. <laughs> Now the interval between first and second is now 86 hundredths of a second. The last time by Stewart was just a little bit faster than Gordon. And a good battle for third now as Mark Martin comes up to challenge Sterling Marlin. Says, okay, Sterling, when you came up and challenged me a little bit earlier, I moved over and let you go. Would you do that for me? I don't think so. On board with a taste of the race, Brian Foods, Sterling Marlin, you see him down the corner, hit the brakes, goes down to 95 miles per hour, and now he accelerates down the straightaway and fills that thing up to 100 and almost 130. At 8,700 RPMs. These cars will turn more with these fresh tires. Right now, they're running about 115, 16 mile per hour average laps. In a few laps, they'll be down to about 112 miles per hour. Dale Earnhardt continues his charge back to the front. Goes by Jimmy Smith, who moves in the 10th position. He lost five positions on that pit stop. He went in running sixth and came out running 11th. It was not because they had a bad pit stop, it's just the nature of pitting on the backstretch. Cost you some time every day. Jeffrey Bedine there just ahead of Dale Earnhardt is in the ninth spot. Earnhardt has a good race car. He's passed a lot of time. This will be two weeks in a row for Goodrich Chevrolet. Last week at Michigan, Earnhardt had one of the best race cars there. He played after about 20, 25 laps, but boy, he's excited for the first 25 laps. Yeah, it was. that Mike Skinner had gotten his lap back, but now Tony Stewart is coming up on him once again to try to put him a lap down once again. Skinner's car is very fast on the new tires, but after they get worn down, get heated up a little bit, it gets uh, very loose with him, it appears. It looked like he was loose coming off turn four that time. Looks like the back end wanted to hang out just a little bit. Comes through, turns under him, and Goes down in turn one on the inside and will put Skinner a lap down. Jeff Gordon shows up within a few car lengths of Tony Stewart, but he has the Mike Skinner automobile between himself and the leader, Tony Stewart. On board with Mike Skinner, the Lowe's home improved warehouse. Chevrolet goes up the hill, moves over, lets Jeff Gordon go by.
time by Jeff Gordon was a second behind Tony Stewart. Let's see how he, this time he's a second and a third behind Tony Stewart. But the traffic pass, passing Mike Skinner with some of that. Let's see what he can do in the lap. Is he going faster or slower? Here's the 30 car of Todd Bodine and Kevin LePage as they try to decide who's going to run in 23rd spot. LePage tries to get to the inside, coming off the corner down the front stretch. Oh, and, oh some contact. And LePage is going to be able to take over the spot from Todd Bodine. And that 12th car of Jeremy Mayfield is not on the same lap as everybody else. Dale or Darryl Waltrip, however, is in the 25th spot. Make that 24th. <laughs> he goes by Todd Bodine. Jeff Last Gordon car. and Tony Stewart, I'm sorry, but I, I wanted to tell you folks, Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart, they're running about the same speed right now. Jeff Tony Stewart, the leader of the race, Home Depot by him. Involved in the wreck with Dale Jarrett, Bill Elliott, and Elliott Sadler have both returned on the racetrack, and I believe John Andretti is about to come out as well. Bobby Labonte just took the fifth position away from Rusty Wallace. It's Rusty we're looking back on from Bobby Labonte's Interstate Batteries Pontiac. About a five and a half seconds behind the leader, Tony Stewart. Stewart continues to rack up the number of laps led here tonight. It's up to 160 of the 186 that we have completed so far in the Goodies Headache Powder 500. With a lead of one and a quarter seconds, Tony Stewart continues to set the pace in the Goodies Headache Powder 500 here at Bristol with almost 200 laps completed. That's one, the completion of lap 193 for Tony. Sterling Marlin running back in third, then Mark Martin and Bobby Labonte. Tony coming up on the 25 car of Wally Dahlenbach. Dahlenbach is the last car on the lead lap in 26th spot. Just before the break, I mentioned that John Andretti had come out of the pits or from behind the wall. Bobby made a couple of laps and then went back behind the wall again. And also the, uh, the shifty car of Ricky Craven. Ricky Craven has gone behind the wall. And that's significant that uh, Andretti completed a few laps and also the 21 of Elliott Sadler because it has moved Dale Jarrett back to 40th position right now. Now he isn't out of the race. They're still working on the car so he can get back out there. But right now our points leader is 40th and behind the wall because of a couple of incidents in the first 100 laps of this event. On board with Todd Bodine, his first NASCAR Winston Cup start in 1999. He last raced at Atlanta, the last race of 1998. He's running in 25th spot on the lead lap. Well, he's not on the lead lap anymore. This is Todd Bodine's 99th NASCAR Winston Cup start. He finished fifth in that last race at Atlanta last year. If you consider average finishes and average finishes only, Tony Stewart is the best of all <laughs> going down through the years. Average finish in the first 22 races of this year, 10.5. Dale Earnhardt averaged 11.7 in his first 22 races. Earl Ross, 12.4. Ridley, 13.0. And Davey Allison, 14.2. Pretty impressive, Doctor. Bob, incredibly impressive, and you got to give a call to these guys on top of the war wagon here, including crew chief Greg Zipanelli. They have not touched a wedge bolt, a track bar, added or removed one pound of air pressure tonight. They have just put tires on it and gas in it, and we are 200 laps into a race at Bristol. To me, that's remarkable. And a battle between Jeffrey Bodine and Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt gets the left side tires down on the apron as they battle for the ninth spot. And Earnhardt is going to get it. Here comes Jimmy Spencer. Spencer trying to take over the 10th position. There's Kenny Irwin right behind him in the 28 car. He's in 
in the battle for those positions as well. Kenny Irwin has had a good run. He started in 11th spot and right now is trying to take over the 10th position. We'll make that 11th. Spencer just took over the 10th position. Yep. Bill Weber told us on NASCAR today that Jimmy Spencer signed the letter of intent to continue driving the 23 car in 19 year 2000. And John Andretti also has signed up for three more years with the Richard Petty team. He likes the king. Yeah, he does. Well, it's a good combination. Here's Irwin taking a look. Whoop. Oh! <laughs> Jeffrey Bodine just can't keep his power team Chevrolet on the bottom of the racetrack. He's got some damage there in the left rear of the car, but he has moved up to the 10th. He's got the 11th position. He's see Kenny Schrader back there in Skull Car. Comes up to challenge. Now, how about Chad Lee? Man, how about that John Deere? Coming right on up through the pack. He's running in sixth position now. Had a good run last week at Michigan. Yes, he did. Started 16th and finished 6th. His Bristol runs have not been very impressive, at least the last two here in the spring. He finished 24th, and a year ago he finished 23rd. Bill Weber has more on Chad Little. He's now in 6th spot. And, Bob, the car he's running normally only runs on concrete tracks at Dover and Bristol. They put a new body on it and took it to Indianapolis to run it on the bricks, and it got wrecked. So they rebuilt it, brought it back here. He's in off the sixth place finish last week, which was a season high. Jeff Hammond has made a few adjustments to keep that car good tonight, but they also got some good news off the track, and that Buddy Parrott will basically become a global team manager for Roush Racing next year and will oversee, among other cars, the 97 of Chad Little, the 17 of Matt Kenton, and the 16 of Kevin LePage, in addition to his duties with the 6 and 99. And the run that Chad is having now is not something that surprises them. They expected to run better later in the season. Last week and this week might be the first indication of that. Chad has had some good runs in 1999. Started off the uh, season with a ninth place finish at Daytona. Backed that up with a ninth place finish in the fourth race of the year at Atlanta. The 33 of Kenny Schrader and the 7 of Michael Walter are battling for the 14th visit. The number one car of Steve Park also in this battle for 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th. And Michael Walter has been trying his best to pass Steve Park in the yellow number one on the outside. He can go up there on the outside, but he can't quite get up far enough to keep Steve from jumping back up there as they come off the turn. He's been doing that for about five or six laps. Michael Walker, he likes to run high on any racetrack when he can, but so far he hasn't made it really work. But see, when he does go up there, he gets a good run down the straightaway, gets a lot of speed, but Steve is able to get his car back up in front of him, coming off the turn, and breaks that momentum. As I recall, he passed several cars up on the high line last night in the bush race, didn't he? I thought he was going to pass the leader, Matt <laughs> Kenneth, up on the high side last night. I didn't win the bush race, but yeah. he did not quite make it. He did Michael. pass Dale Earnhardt Jr. up on the outside. Finished in second last night to Matt Kenson and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Finished in the first position. There's Tony Stewart. His lead over Jeff Ford is now a second and a half. As Sterling Marlin runs third, Mark Martin is fourth, and Bobby Labonte is fifth with 215 laps gone. Spending a Saturday night with ESPN at Bristol Motor Speedway in the Goodies Headache Powder 500 being brought to you by Miller Lite. Taste a true Pilsner. By Advance Auto Parts, the best part is our people. And by Pennzoil with Pure Base, made for the way you drive. Stop, go, Pennzoil. We're not too many laps away from the halfway mark. We have completed 223 of 500 circuits. There's the leader, Tony Stewart, and Sterling Marlin takes second position away from Jeff Gordon. How about old Sterling Marlin tonight? Tennessee boy doing well at a Tennessee racetrack. He has two top fives in 29 Bristol races. The last top five was 16 races ago, second in 91 this race. Three quarters of a second behind the leader, Tony Stewart. Just those couple of race cars there in between them. There's about three race cars. 
between Kenny Wallace, who just won a lap down. Presley had gone back out on the track. He was the first one out of the race, but he went out and ran a few laps, but he's back in the pits once again. There's a lot going on in Major League Baseball as the race is on for the playoffs. Get a report on Tiger's tail. Ned says he had an exciting afternoon on the golf course and also the college football openers. All that will be reported on on SportsCenter coming up at the conclusion of our coverage of the Goodies Headache Powder 500. Rick Mass back there going to lap down. He's going to lap down, down as Jeff Gordon, the third place car, goes by. Stewart coming up on the 26 car of Johnny Benson to put him, try to put him two laps down. Johnny is running in the 30th spot. Wow. Benson had his hands full coming off turn two. He did. So good around this great track. Obviously, Greg Zippadelli and the crew has done a terrific job in the Home Depot Pontiac Center race tonight. Elliott is struggling. He was involved in the accident that uh, also involved Dale Jarrett, John Andretti, and others. Bill is back out there. He's 83 laps down, running in the 39th position. Dale Earnhardt has caught Rusty Wallace once again, trying to take over the seventh position. Well, Rusty's been a surprise. He normally is so good on this racetrack. Not that he's running that bad, but he's not running as good as he normally does. There he's got the pass by Dale Earnhardt. Well, Ward Burton back there in the California Party. He is in ninth position. He's getting some pressure from Jimmy Spencer. Talking about Ward Burton. John Kernan has more on Dale Earnhardt. Bob, this is a car that Earnhardt ran here in the spring. It was actually a backup car. He came with the primer and had to go through the backup. He started from the 34th spot in the spring and drove all the way to a 10th place finish after picking on the back straight. Talked to the crew this afternoon. They seemed very confident that if they could get the last round of pit stops to happen under green, of course, you'd need a pocket full of rabbits. Ward Burton now is beginning to catch Rusty Wallace. Burton is in ninth, Rusty in eighth. You see Ward Burton's a little distance between himself and Jimmy Spencer in the Western car. All drivers in the series this year, Ward Burton has increased his standing in the points more than any other driver from last year. He finished uh, at this time in the season last year. He was 21st in points, and this year he is in the 11th in the point standings, up 10 from a year ago. And so Copter Cam catches the action through the corner and down the straightaway as Ward Burton pursues Rusty Wallace. Now we're less than 10 laps away from the halfway point and $10,000 to the leader at the crossed flags mark. Looks Tony. like that Sterling Marlin, as Tony Stewart tries to work his way through the traffic, that's allowed Sterling Marlin to close the gap just a little bit. When we check out our AutoZone on, on track interval, you'll see that Sterling Marlin started out a second and a half, 1.6 second behind, and closed it down to 1.1. A half a second isn't much. There's Parkers. More from Bill Weber. Now, Benny, that's pretty much just what they told him. Not only are you as good as the leader, but you're roping him in. And they're feeling it the longer the green flag run goes, the better their car gets. So we'll have to watch when they pit how good they are on the restart. But they figure the longer it stays green, the more they can run down Tony Stewart. Right now, they feel the 40s, the best car on the track. Dine has just gone down a lap. He's running in 18th position. Here is Schrader and Terry Labonte. And Tim Schrader and uh, Ricky, Ricky Rudd. Rudd. They're trying to stay on the lead lap. You see Tony Stewart right there behind him. So they're fighting hard to stay on the lead lap. 
15th, 16th, and 17th. Ricky Rudd in the tie score got that lap back. Remember, now he's in jeopardy of going back a lap down as Tony Cook is there. Tony Cook is going to back up. Ricky Rudd's very first top 10 finish in his NASCAR Winston Cup career was here in March of 1975 when he finished in the 10th position. And this is Ricky Rudd's 650th NASCAR Winston Cup start. And he's side by side with Ken Schrader. Tony Stewart has nowhere to go. <laughs> Car of Bill Elliott in the mix. As Schrader is running behind Elliott's car, he goes a lap down to the leader, Tony Stewart. So now 16 cars are on the lead lap. As the race nears the halfway point, we're just less than three laps away from the 250 laps completed mark. Tony Stewart has led 221 so far. The caution is out again here at Bristol Motor Speedway, an incident involving David Green over in turn number three. That has brought the leaders into the pit area, and it's also resulted in Jeff Gordon getting the lead with Mark Martin second and Tony Stewart, who was the leader, back in third spot. That's how they came out of the pit area. Here is why we're under the caution. Well, you see, it's a lot of traffic there. David Green in the 41 car ran in on it and had to jam the brakes on it, it looked like Benny, and lost control of it. Exactly right. He was running the back of the 97 car, jam on the brakes, and when he did hit the brakes extremely hard, he lost control of the Kodiak Chevrolet and backed around the fence. Once again, there we see the 31, the 16, and the 97 all jammed up in front of David Green, and bam, in the wall he goes. Meanwhile, during the pit stops, as we said, Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart, or rather, uh, Mark Martin were both able to get out ahead of Tony Stewart. Here are the pit stops. The Rainbow Warriors moving quickly to the left side of the car. You can see that the clock's running there on the bob and see Gordon the 17.1. 40 car 22-2 and Stewart 21-7. So they were the losers on that pit stop because Mark Martin beat them out as well. And so here's your Coke pit summary. Stewart from first to third. Marlin down two positions. Jeff Gordon picks up two. Mark Martin up two. And Dale Earnhardt loses five. That's not uh, unprecedented because he is pitting on the backstretch. There you see the Rusty Wallace also maintained his position. And Dale Jarrett is back on the racetrack. Jerry? And he fell. We saw a moment ago the adjustment from the car number 24 for Jeff Gordon. He even playing the car and got very, very tight. They put a round of wedge in. It took a round of wedge out of it and made an air pressure adjustment out with Tony Stewart. They made an air pressure adjustment to the back tire, trying to increase the forward bite, but they had a problem with the left rear tire, which cost him the lead on the pit stop. Bill Weber? Sterling Merlin has a good car, but they had a slow stop. Trouble on the left front. That cost them some seconds. Mark Martin made a wedge adjustment and also an air pressure adjustment to try and improve his car. John? Dale Earnhardt came in. Jimmy Spencer also in. They both took on four tires. No adjustments on Spencer as the green flag gets ready to fly. Earnhardt's crew, a slight air pressure adjustment. The car still a little tight in the center of the corners. Gatorade halfway money is going to be paid to the driver at least the first five laps under the green flag because lap 250 was at the caution flag. So can Jeff Gordon pick up the $10,000 in Gatorade? We'll see. This is the first time that Jeff Gordon has led tonight. Rusty Wallace led 26 laps in a long stretch, 225 circuits. The Tony Stewart was out front, and now Gordon is in the lead. And a scramble for position. There's Daryl Waltrip, Ted Musgrave, Steve Park, and a whole bunch of others fighting it out. Waltrip is a lap down in 21st position. Steve Park.
Clark is still on the lead lap in 12th position. Jeff Burton also in the mix there. He's a lap down in 24th. Well, these are normally tense moments after a restart. You get the lap cars mixed in with the cars on the lead lap. They run side by side. It's just the least little mistake by somebody. And here's the oh, problem. Hut Strickland right at the start finish line. Dave and Marcus. Dave Marcus also involved. And here's the 26 car of Johnny Benson. And that is in a completely different area of the racetrack yeah. than uh, Strickland and Marcus. That's down in turn number one. Let's see what happened here. Well, I looked up and saw him about three abreast off turn four and said, there must be going to be a wreck here. And <laughs> sure enough, there we see Kyle Petty, Hutt Strickland, and Johnny Benson. There we see Kyle and Hutt making contact. And there. Hutt just barely touches Johnny Benson as he goes by. The camera follows Hutt Strickland because he's crashing. But meanwhile, Johnny Benson is crashing down in turn one. It slid all the way down the front stretch and uh, crashed down in turn one. And then Dave Marcus apparently slowed down, probably got hit from behind, and he spun out. There's Dave Marcus as the NASCAR officials signal to the pit crews that the caution is out once again. This is Wally Dollenbach's on board. Call. He almost hit uh, Strickland and also almost had contact with David Green. There is Johnny Benson and where he stopped on the racetrack. So a couple of cautions here. 262 laps now in the books. We'll take a break and be back with more in a moment. Bobby Labonte. And Dale Jarrett, one of those drivers, if he wins, the Pepsi Southern 500 could win a million dollar bonus and a lucky fan also eligible for the cash. Our Darlington coverage will begin on Friday at 3.30 with Bud Pole qualifying. Saturday, the NASCAR Bush Series has the Duraloop 200 at 1 o'clock. Our happy hour coverage is at 6 o'clock next Saturday evening. And then next Sunday, a Labor Day tradition. It begins with RPM today at 11.30, NASCAR today at 12.30 with Bill Weber, the Pepsi Southern 500 at 1, and RPM tonight has the wrap-up on the big Labor Day weekend motor racing events at 8 o'clock. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, go.com. A record crowd is here tonight with more than 141,000 people and more seats are planned for the spring race. 12,738 more seats will be built down in turns one and two, bringing the capacity to more than 147. Tickets go on sale next week. We're back to caution. Tony Stewart, Benny, you big dummy, was in front at the end of 250 laps. It was under green, so he wins the $10,000. I think what happened, they came around and got the caution on lap 250, but uh, uh, that, that counts because uh, he was still under green until he got to the start finish line. They're the top three, Gordon, Martin, and Tony Stewart. Take a look at our Bud Race recap. Jeff Gordon has only led 17 laps. Tony Stewart has led 225. We've had three lead changes, six caution periods, holding the average speed down to a little over 88 miles an hour. The three leaders, Stewart, Rusty Wallace, and Jeff Gordon. You see Kyle Petty down on the inside there. Apparently he had some damage to his car. He just now came out from behind the wall or out of the pit. So uh, he must have, and he's about eight laps down. We have to go ahead and make repairs. Only one car officially out of the race. That is Ricky Craven. For those of you just joining us, Dale Jarrett had trouble early in the race, spent 156 laps behind the wall, is currently shown in 40th position. The one of Steve Park and the five of Terry Labonte take the 11th position away from Jeffrey Bodine. Right on the inside, losing position after position. I think he's trying to get out of the way. 
It looked like he was, and everybody else trying to get by and really a jammed up mess there for a moment, but we were here to prevail. Jerry Punch, what's the problem? Well, first of all, he can't find a hole to get down pit road. His father is trying to find him an opening, and he can't get in. He's shouting flat tire, flat tire, and the Miller crew is up on the wall waiting for Rusty to be able to get down pit road, and now he is still on the outside. The spotter very valuable to tell him there's an opening, and the spotters keep saying inside, inside, inside. Rusty trying to get down pit road and losing valuable time. Now he finally gets to the bottom of the racetrack, and next time by, he will come down pit road for what is an unscheduled stop. Oh, that is a tough break. Not only does he have an unscheduled pit stop, he loses about a half lap trying to make that unscheduled pit yeah. stop. Yeah, he finally gets down, gets slowed down so he can come into the pits. The seven-time winner here at Bristol Motor Speedway makes a green flag pit stop on lap 279. Moving down pit road slowly at 35 miles an hour, and the Miller Lite crew goes to work, Doc. Well, they're still not sure which tire it is, so they're going to have to go ahead and change all four tires. Rusty went ahead and made the call. Four tires, and they go to the right side, and now to the left side of the car, and they look at the tires coming off. Left front and left rear get hooked up, popping up with gas, and down and away. 16.7 second pit stop for Rusty Wallace, but it was a very, very costly green flag pit stop. Yeah, he was almost a lap down before he finally got into the pits. And we'll see how many laps right now. He's being shown two laps down. So that will be very, very difficult to make up because he's, so far tonight he has not been able to run with Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart. Watching the battle for fourth position here. That's Bobby Labonte right behind Sterling Marlin. And Labonte tries to get to the inside and get fourth from Marlin and does. Sterling Marlin in the Coors Light. Joe Labor's one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. And after this pit stop, Labonte goes by, so it looks like he has lost a little bit of his speed, talking about Sterling Marlin. And Marlin's short track finishes this year. He was 14th in the spring race here at Bristol, 13th at Martinsville, and 18th at Richmond. Bobby Labonte is about five and a half seconds behind the leader, Jeff Gordon. And it was a right rear head on Rusty Wallace's car that was flat. Man, what a tough break. There is Terry Labonte passing the 33 car of Ken Schrader, who is not on the same, lead, uh, same lap as Terry. Labonte is in 11th, and Schrader is one lap down in 21st. But the car just ahead of Terry, the one car of Steve Park, is on the same lap as Labonte, as are the 23 car of Jimmy Spencer, and the leader is encountering heavy traffic, the leader being Jeff Gordon. He's catching up to Kenny Irwin, who is the last car in the lead lap. He is running in the 15th position. Kenny Irwin, that last caution flag, made a series of pit stops, and I saw him working on the car. I think Kenny Irwin made some contact with the retaining wall off turn two. And right now, it's a little bit slower. Bill Weber. And after that last pit stop for that short green flag period, Benny, he went back out and says, the car is just turning way too soon. It's like it's feeding my mind. It turns it where I want it to. They brought him in. They made a track bar adjustment, topped him off with fuel, sent him back out. Well, he finally passes Kenny Irwin, putting him a lap down. And now 14 cars are on the lead lap. Running in 14th position is Chad Little, but he's quite a ways ahead of Jeff Gordon. Gordon leads by three tenths of a second over Mark Martin. Stewart is third, followed by Bobby Labonte and Sterling Marlin. We'll be right back. And yet another caution is waving over Bristol Motor Speedway, the seventh of the evening. Chad Little among those involved. He's been in the pits a couple of times. He is going back out on the racetrack right now, still on the lead lap. But the car that took the big hit, well, we're going to see who it is. Jeremy Mayfield, the mobile one car goes up. He gets tagged by Chad Little, goes up, and just about backs it in the fence. But he comes off the racetrack, and I think the 25 runs into him, doesn't he? Yes, he does. You can see he tries to get slowed down the 25 of Wally Dahlen back, but the leaders were coming mm -hmm. right up on this. Yep. Jeff Gordon and uh, Tony Stewart got by Gordon 
in that Got by Mark, Gar Mark Martin, yeah, into second position. Now okay. from uh, Wally Dollenbach. And there you see the contact between Chad Littleton and John Deere, the green car, and Jeremy Mayfield. And, oh, they meet Ooh. nose to nose right there. What a terrible place to meet. And Dollenbach just slides into the pits. And Jeremy Mayfield also makes his way onto his backstop pit area. Four cars involved in the crash. Jeremy Mayfield, Bill Elliott, Kenny Irwin was involved, as was Chad Little. Kenny Irwin was trying to beat the leaders back to the line to get his lap back. And I think ran on the wreck trying to do that. So again, with the caution flag out here at Bristol, it's Gordon Stewart, Martin Labonte, and Mark. Bristol Motor Speedway. We went green and we had another crash while we were away at commercial break. I know you find that hard to believe, folks. We had a crash <laughs> right at Bristol Motor Speedway. <laughs> Unbelievable, isn't it? It is. Anyway, the leaders have uh, come in for another change of tires during this caution. Four cars again were involved in this most recent incident. We will uh, back up our videotape and show you what happened early on. There's Tony Stewart out of the groove. Tony Stewart, I think, might have had a flat tire. He goes to the corner. He loses position as Kenny Wallace goes by. Mark Martin goes by. And when that that kind of slowed the field down, got him side by side and back. And when that happens, that's disaster. Watch this when he go down in the corner. Bobby Labonte is there. You ever see Kenny, er Kenny Irwin, the 28 car, and the 36 car of Jerry Nagel make contact, and there we see the 22 car of Ward Burton going to crash. From the Pennzoil copter cam, there's the contact that sends Irwin sideways, and then the chain reaction. Mike Skinner, we see the low car also involved. Ward Burton was on the lead lap and was involved, as uh, Steve Park was also involved. Rusty Wallace got through. We'll ride with him his onboard camera. I think he might have got bumped just a little bit, but not too hard. We'll see when, when he gets in there. Yep. Yep. Hit the uh, 31 car, Mike Skinner. Let's check Mike Skinner's Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse onboard camera. He goes down the corner. We see Irwin make contact with the 36 and around go. Man. Yet another angle of these cars going in Turn three. There's the contact. We Nagel. see Michael Walter run in the back of the 22 car and spin him, and the one car of Steve Park in the back of the seven. Might be some damage on that one car of Steve Park. Down to Jerry Punch. Tony Stewart, big break for him, Doc, because his tire was flat, right? Exactly, Bob. Some nights you're good, some nights you're lucky, some nights you're good and lucky. Tonight, Tony Stewart is both. This is the right rear tire. On the restart, he yelled, tire, tire, tire. The car got sideways, jumped very, very loose. And of course, they jumbled up behind him. And because of the jumble, the caution came out. He got a break, got to come on pit road for four tires. Otherwise, he would have lost probably at least two laps. And his chance for a victory would have been over. Let's check in with Bill Weber. Well, Jerry, Mark Martin's been tight at the beginning of his runs and strong at the end of them. Though the last pit stop, they tried to make the car better at the beginning of the run. Well, they made the car way too tight. So Mark came in, got four tires and a track bar adjustment, then got pinched in by other cars coming down pit road and lost several positions. Last time I checked, he was back to ninth. Now he's very concerned about traffic on the restart. As for Sterling Marlin, another strong run for him here at Bristol. His car, they'd only made a track bar adjustment earlier in the race. This time, the car was getting too tight as the track is changing. They raised the track bar just a little bit, gave him four tires and fuel, John mentioned that uh, Steve Park had run into the back of the seven car. He was on the lead lap at the time, but now he's losing laps in the pits as the team has to put a new radiator in the car. When he got into the back of Michael Waldrop, he broke his radiator, so he's going to lose a lot of valuable time here on pit road. Yeah, the right. car's off. Be ready now. Now, the first five cars did not pit on this. Jeff Ford won the race off pit road. Great, great, great. He currently is in the sixth position. 
The leader is Terry Labonte. Dale Earnhardt is second. Jimmy, Jimmy Stewart and Jimmy Spencer is third. Jeff Rebodine fourth. And Ricky Rudd is in fifth position. Those five did not make pit stops during this caution. But they stopped about 10 laps ago, so it's not like they're out there on the old tires. They only have about five or six laps on the tires they have on the car. Jeff Burton had got back on the lead lap, but you can see he's getting past right there now. He was out in front of the leaders, thought he could stay out there and hope for a caution, but now he has gone the lap down. And also the 30 car of Todd Bodine, right in front of Terry Labonte. The Brian car, Brian Meach car, is on the tail in the lead lap in 15th position. Johnny Benson has come back out. He's 48 laps down. Terry Labonte in his 625th straight NASCAR Winston Cup race and his 41st straight here at Bristol. He was the fastest in happy hour, which was held in the heat of the afternoon and perhaps isn't a good indication of who's going to be good in the race. But right now, Terry Labonte, by virtue of the fact that he did not stop during this most recent caution, he is in the front of the field by about a half second over Earnhardt and a massive traffic jam back here. Gordon right in the middle of that. Mark Martin is in the middle of it. And Tony Stewart, all of them in very, very heavy traffic. Stewart is eighth, Mark Martin is ninth. Bobby Devine is back to seventh. But that's all as a result of one five cars not hitting on this caution. That's why they're back as far as they are. You see Rusty Wallace's car back there. If you just turned on the TV, you said, what about Rusty? Well, he had a flat tire on the green flag. He didn't get the stop. He, so he's a couple laps down back in 25th position. And if you are not aware of what happened earlier in the evening, points leader Dale Jarrett had a couple of crashes early on. He's 156 laps down in 40th position. trying to put Todd Bodine down a lap. Yeah, Todd, Todd Bodine had gotten back on the lead lap as a result of the, the pit stops there. Meanwhile, right behind Terry Labonte is Dale Earnhardt in that good wrench Chevrolet. Down to Bill Weber. The reason Terry Labonte is out of sequence on his pit stops is because when he pitted two cautions ago, his car had gone from bad news to tight, tight, tight. So they took two rounds of wedge out and made an air pressure adjustment. Terry said the car was halfway better. He pitted when no one else did because he was only going to lose four positions. They took another round of wedge out. The car's better, and he won in the track position battle. John? Dale Earnhardt also pitted on that same sequence as Terry Labonte. Nothing wrong with the car, just a slight air pressure adjustment. Still a little bit tight in the turns. But they figured, hey, we're pitting on the back stretch. We're at a disadvantage. We need to do something to change our luck. So let's get off sequence with the uh, Martin and Jeff Ward, those guys, and see what happens. And it played the next caution period played right to their hands. Earnhardt getting around Todd Bodine now to set sail for Terry Labonte to try and lead this race. And all the cars will have to make at least one more pit stop before the race is over. 317 laps are now completed. Terry Labonte, who has finished 13th in the last two runs here at Bristol, is the leader of the race with Dale Earnhardt in second. Back in a moment. Bob Jenkins, Vinnie Parsons, Ned Jarrett, John Curtin, Bill Weber, and Dr. Jerry Punch. Back at Bristol Motor Speedway, it's the Goodies Headache Powder 500. 326 laps completed. Terry Labonte leads Dale Earnhardt, Jimmy Spencer, Ricky Rudd, and Jeff Gordon. Those are the top five. Seems very familiar. Back about 1995, didn't we see these two battle to the checkered flag with Labonte sliding across the finish line and then banging into the wall? Yes, we did. As a matter of fact, on NASCAR today, he talked about that. That had to be his most exciting race here at Bristol Motor Speedway, winning in victory lane with the thing all radio all broken. Back in ninth, 10th, and 11th place, 8th, 9th, and 10th, we have Tony Stewart. We have Michael Waltrip, Mark Martin, and there's the 40 car of Sterling Marlin also. And Bobby Labonte leads that group. 
and Michael Waltrip looked like he was going to try to pass Tony Stewart on the outside. He was involved in that wreck up there a few minutes ago, wasn't he? Well, someone ran the back, and we see where he's knocked off the yeah. back bumper, but he's a lap down now as a result of that. No, he's not. He's not a lap down. He's nope. in ninth place. Ninth place, it yep. was For a moment there, he was being shown a lap down, but he had to go back to the start finish line here, so. And the Joe Gibbs teammates, Bobby Labonte and Tony Stewart. Stewart has clinched the five bonus points for leading the most laps here tonight. He was out for 225 laps. No one can lead more than that now. And he looks to the inside. Meanwhile, here comes Martin up on the outside. Hmm. And there goes Mark Martin by Tony Stewart. Now he's going to try to drive up on the outside of Bobby Labonte, but Jeffrey Bodine is there. Jeffrey Bodine running into sixth position. Wow, look at Martin. Looks pretty aggressive there. Wow. <laughs> Bobby. Well, that great home run battle between Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa continues. You'll be able to see Mark McGuire in action with his St. Louis Cardinals and the Atlanta Braves on Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Coverage begins at 7.30 with baseball tonight. That's tomorrow night on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, Go.com. Well, they had a great game last night. They, met, they had a good one this afternoon. At the 11th inning, they were still tied 0-0. Zero to zero. No kidding. Yeah, and I don't know how it finally came out, but they had a great series there. You can check Sports Center tonight, Dick, about all That's the right. thing that happened yeah. on baseball. Right. right after our coverage of this race. And we have 165 laps to go. We're watching the seventh and eighth place competitors, Bobby Labonte and Tony Stewart. And the leader now gets in some traffic again as he goes to the inside of Kenny Irwin. Irwin's been knocked around and he's three laps down in 26th position. Been knocked around. That's pretty well put, Bob. <laughs> Car showing some battle scars. Steve Grissom back after nine car, the Melling car back on the racetrack after the contact with the outside retaining wall. Speaking of the Atlanta Braves, the car being sponsored by the Atlanta Braves this weekend. There's the interval on the clock. It's about 43 hundredths of a second as Terry Labonte comes up now on Jerry Nadeau once again. Nadeau running in 22nd spot. The action being covered from overhead by the Pennzoil Copter Cam. Half second lead for Terry Labonte over Dale Earnhardt, Spencer, Rudd, and Gordon are your top five at Bristol Motor Speedway. Back in just a moment. Beautiful overhead shot of Bristol Motor Speedway in the northeast section of Tennessee. It's the Goodies Headache Powder 500, 23rd race of the 1999 NASCAR Winston Cup season. You know, the official NASCAR website, www.nascar.com, has a lot of features, one of which is uh, at just about every race, a half hour afterwards, one of the uh, ESPN announcers gets on and does a chat with some uh, fans. I did it last week after Michigan and had a great time. Appreciate the great questions from the very knowledgeable motorsports fans up in the Michigan area. So check it out at www.nascar.com. Well, the seven car has some problems, Bill. Yeah, Bob, they got big problems. Uh, Michael Waltrip's got the front of his car caved in. They're going to need a new radiator. Uh, he may have a problem with the oil pump. He's sitting here on pit road. It's going to be a lengthy stop. Uh, you can see the steam billowing out. So a radiator problem, a sheet metal problem, maybe an oil pump problem. we shot directions. Michael's sitting there watching. Tough break for Michael. He slid back to 29th position and will continue to lose laps as he sits there in the repair goes on had a great run going tonight well Joe Nemechek tried to crash twice in one lap and never did do it BP <laughs> no he didn't Ned, check this out <laughs> well, you can see the blue car being hit by the white car of Brett Bodine almost lost it there don't know how he hung on to it went in the corner ahead of Brett here they come off of turn four and they make contact once again and he still hung on to it man oh man <laughs> Rusty Wallace is going to check it out. 
There they come off turn two. All the kind. Oh, man. Great job by Nemechek. But he drives that baby back down in the corner. Oh, different. That was off turn four. That yeah, was that not was off a, turn two. That was a second hit. All right, here comes the leader, Terry Labonte, through some traffic now. He's put a little bit of traffic between himself and Dale Earnhardt. Now three cars as Earnhardt goes to the inside of his teammate, Mike Skinner, and gives him a kiss. Then what? They made a little bit of contact there. That might have knocked that. But look, we, oh, we see some sparks coming up from under the three car. John, what's going on? Benny Dell hadn't said anything about that, but he did a few laps ago radio in and tell the team, and you see sparks flying from the cars. He bottoms out in the turn. He told the team the car had gotten extremely tight, hard to turn in the corner. So they're hoping to hang on and in the next pit stop, make another adjustment and be good to go to the end. There are the sparks. It's pretty obvious. Meanwhile, Labonte has pulled away by more than a second over Earnhardt. Almost like the right front tire lost some air and it letting it go down some more and drag the racetrack. But I don't know. Right now, Terry Labonte. These guys are not making much progress on gaining on Terry Labonte. As a matter of fact, he ran 111 mile per hour that last lap. And the next one faster than close to Earnhardt at 110 miles per hour. And how about Jimmy Spencer, who is in third position, has been strong all night, started this race 24th. He's one of those pitting on the back stretch, but still running in third. Of course, Earnhardt is also pitted over on the back stretch. John Kernan, more on Dale Earnhardt. Bob Dale Earnhardt just radioed in and told the crew, I think I knocked the right front fender down onto the tire. So they're going to have the spotter keep a close eye on that because if it's too, if it's hitting the tire too much, of course, it could eventually cause it to go flat. And if a right front goes flat at Bristol, especially when you go into the turns, you're going to hit the wall extremely hard. And he did that when he tried to pass his teammate, Mike Skinner. tonight but is in second spot and he's been as low as 26 and we continue to see those sparks come out from underneath the car occasionally. Now that last lap Dale Earnhardt ran faster than the leader Terry Lamont. He ran over 111 miles per hour so what are we seeing evidently evident is not hurting the, the performance of the Goodrich Chevrolet. Yeah he's shaved the interval down to less than a second now it's 82 hundredths of a second to be exact. And sparks here at Bristol tonight uh, is not that unusual because the car bottoms out a lot. So Terry Labonte sets the pace here with 363 laps to go. They're the top 10 back in a moment. Hundred and twenty nine laps to go in the goodies headache powder 500 from Bristol Motor Speedway You've joined one hundred and forty one thousand fans who have gathered here tonight to see the spectacle under the lights RPM tonight at midnight tonight on the deuce will have the preview of the Grand Prix of Belgium which is run tomorrow we'll recap this race and the uh, Pep Boys Indy Racing League is in action at Pikes Peak International Raceway tomorrow. The preview at midnight tonight on the Deuce. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, go.com. Tara Navani leads, but uh, it's only about uh, half a second now over Dale Earnhardt. There they are with the current points leader of the Winston Cup Series, Dale Jarrett. He was in between them. Now here comes Dale Earnhardt to the inside of Jarrett. Jarrett is running in 39th position. He is 158 laps behind. That was because he spent that much time getting repairs to the car. And the uh, points have been shaved by 100. 214 now. Mark Martin behind Jarrett in the battle for the 1999 NASCAR Winston Cup Championship. Mark Martin currently being shown in the seventh position. He's. Uh, he's still in the thick of the battle. Mark is 12 seconds behind the leader right now. You see this group of cars, all these cars are right in front of the leader. Here comes Terry Labonte and Dale Earnhardt hard on his tail as he tries to catch him. Meanwhile, Labonte trying to get through this traffic. Oh, Earnhardt, some contact there with Jeffrey Bodine going into three. 
to the four car. Bobby Hamilton, something drag in the racetrack. Oh, and I thought Labonte was going to go on the inside, but Jeff Burton was there. Jeff Burton just went a lap down. He's in the 11th place now, only 10 cars on the lead lap. And Ward Burton is in the 10th position. Here's Earnhardt. <laughs> Once again, we see Dale Earnhardt, just like last week at the front of the field. And here he goes on the outside, Bob. It. And everybody, the 141,000 people <laughs> all stand up. Every one of them. Earnhardt has the lead. On lap 380, Dale Earnhardt passes Terry Labonte and takes over the front spot. And he will be the sixth, make that the fifth leader tonight. at Bristol. Here's the Hardy's field summary. Right now, everybody in the top five in points are staying the same. In the second five, Labonte moves up one. Rusty Wallace goes down one in the point standing. Schrader and Marlin gain a couple of positions. And the next car to go a lap down is just ahead of Dale Earnhardt. Ward Burton in the 22. Dale Earnhardt right now would love to see this race go green the rest of the way because if the cause of flag comes out, then that gives a huge advantage to Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, all those guys hitting on the front stretch. But it won't be as bad as it was because there are not as many cars on the lead lap. There are only 10 cars on the lead lap now, and it's about to catch the 10th place car right there on Ward Burton. Of course, he's one of those that's hitting on the front stretch. Here at Bristol, Dale Earnhardt has eight wins, 18 top fives, 28 top tens. He was sixth last August, 10th here in April, and is leading his 28th race here at this facility. Doc? And Bob, remember back in April when he wrecked his primary car in happy hour and they had to roll a backup car out of the truck and they were working on it? In fact, he himself got out in his fire suit and was trying to get the car ready. He started shotgun on the field, 43rd and drove that car up through the field and finally, as you said a moment ago, finished 10th. Well, this is that same race car. Earnhardt said, I fell in love with that car that night, and that's the car we're going to bring back to Bristol and beat him in August. And indeed, that's what he's doing right now. Yes, he is. Now, remember, he is off sequence as far as the fifth. Not, not by a whole lot, but... Uh... Everybody will have to make, as you pointed out earlier, at least one more pit stop. And certainly they're within the window now. Twelve laps to go. They can go the rest of the distance. If, uh, they can stop any time now. Once again, down the left side tires, down on the apron of the racetrack. Passing Joe Nemechek, who now is two laps down, or almost two laps down, in 17th position. Ricky Rudd is now the third place car. There we see the tied right, and right behind him is Jeff Gordon, the DuPont Chevrolet. He is currently in fourth place. And check our AutoZone on track interval between Earnhardt and Jeff Gordon. And we see that Jeff Gordon has closed in almost a second and a half on Dale Earnhardt in the five laps between lap 383 and 387. And now just a couple of laps later, Gordon is right on the back bumper of the tied ride. Jarrett getting passed once again. It's been a tough night for Jarrett, but uh, he admitted in, a, in the interview that his original problem was his own fault, just perhaps a little bit over aggressive at the start. But it's one of the few times in 1999 that J Dale Jarrett has had problems. Now Gordon's going to look on the outside of Ricky Wright. Got a good run going on the outside. Red Bridge in the room. And he finally gets by, so move Jeff Gordon up into third position.
laps continue to click away. Just a little more than 100 remaining now in the Goodies Headache Powder 500 from Bristol Motor Speedway. Dale Earnhardt leads Terry Labonte. Goodies Headache Powder 500 NASCAR Winston Cup Race on ESPN being brought to you by Polaris Watercraft. Ride the best. By Quaker State for protection beyond 3,000 miles under any driving conditions. And by the more than 2,700 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. In just about one hour from now at the conclusion of our coverage of this race, You'll be able to go to the source for sports news, the one that you have come to know, love, and trust over the past 10 years, Sports Center. That's coming up next with Trey Wingo and Steve Levy with the report on several stories, including the Major League Baseball playoff race, Tiger's Tale, Tiger Woods, and college football openers that happened today. Sports Center is at 11 o'clock Eastern time here on ESPN. But we have 96 more laps to go, and the question is, is Dale Earnhardt going to win this thing? If it goes green the rest of the way, he has an excellent chance to win this race. But you're right, Ned, if it goes green, caution flag will put him at a disadvantage because Jeff Gordon will be able to pit on the front stretch. See, everybody's going to have to pit one more time. Now, right now, Jeff Gordon's running about four and a quarter seconds behind him. So, but if the caution comes out, he, he makes that up, plus any advantage it might have in the pits. So, but like, if they pit on the green flag, no one has a clear advantage. So, Earnhardt can maintain that four second lead. Well, Earnhardt is the fastest car on the racetrack, at least that last lap. He was faster than anybody else, and this time also is the fastest over 110 miles an hour. We're following him on the Pennzoil Copter Cam. 110.213 was his speed last lap. That was just a little bit faster than Terry Labonte, who was second quick at 109 plus. And Earnhardt now moving to the inside of Chadwick, who had such a good run going earlier in the evening, but is now eight laps down in the 28th spot. Nine cars are on the lead lap. And Dave Marcus is very slow. Dave Marcus's car is stopped up between one and two. I don't feel he will not be able to get to the inside, I don't think. And, and the caution flag is out. What Earnhardt did not want to see. Marcus is moving down the back stretch, but the caution has already come out. A tough wow. break for Dale Earnhardt. Well, we'll, well see. Let's yeah. see what happens. Let's not count them out yet. This is the ninth caution of the evening. It's some pretty good damage to the front of Dave Marcus' car. He had been running very slow on the high side of the racetrack for a couple of laps. Now, what did it look like? Is that right front tire? Yes, it is. Flat, and maybe was trying to get down and couldn't. And uh, finally came to a momentary halt, and then he cranked up and came on around. There are just nine cars left on the lead lap. Uh, with 90 left to go, and of course those pitted here on the front stretch will get the first opportunity. Let's go to Bill Weber. The 5, the 24, and the 20 on your screen. This is a big break for Terry Labonte, able to pit under caution. His car's a little tight in the middle, but they don't plan to make any changes. Clean the windshield, give him four tires and fuel. Under green, this should be the last stop of the evening for the race leaders. Labonte getting the left side tires now to Jerry Punch. No adjustments on Jeff Gordon's car. Four tires, one can of fuel only. The fuel's already in, the tires are on, and he's down and away. Earnhardt in the back pits in front of John Kernis. Dale Earnhardt in a four tire change as we watch for the guys on the big on the front stretch. And here they come. Terry Labonte won that battle over his teammate Jeff Gordon. They swing by. There's two spots that Earnhardt lost. But that's all he's going to lose. A great pit stop for Dale Earnhardt as he goes back out in third position. And the crew extremely happy about that. Behind Terry Labonte and Jeff Gordon. That's a disadvantage of pitting on the back stretch. He, he had a great pit stop, but he still loses two positions. And you know where he loses all that, Benny? It's not that he had, like you said, he had a great pit stop. So the difference is when the pace car drops the front stretch, 
guys who are pitting on the front stretch off. And once he gets past pit road, well, then you see the pace car don't run as fast as they do when they come out of the pits. When they come out of the pits, they accelerate full after they get to the end of pit road, and that's where the time is made up. Yep. So Richard Childress sees his driver, Dale Earnhardt, go from the lead to third position here with the caution still out at Bristol. Since April of 1998, we have had nine different winners win nine short track races. Will we see a tenth different winner here tonight? Could be. Dale Earnhardt is right up there amongst them. He is in third position right now, and this place would erupt if we had an Earnhardt win here tonight. And right now, it is Terry Labonte and Jeff Gordon ahead of Earnhardt as the pace car gets set to pull off the racetrack, and the green flag gets set to wave in the air once again. Tony Stewart is fourth, and Bobby Labonte fifth. Terry Labonte gets a good start there, gets out in front of the lap car of Ward Burton. Spot. We see all the yellow riding is going to affect Goodyear tire, and sometimes you can cut a tire down. It looks like Earnhardt's going to be okay. Ward Burton getting a lap back, getting by Terry Labonte. That allows Jeff Gordon to catch right up to Terry Labonte. Terry wanted to keep that lap car between he and Gordon, but couldn't quite do it. He's fast here on the restart. And he's in 10th position. Jeff Gordon looking on the inside of his teammate. Can't quite get that run he needed. Reminder coming up in about 50 minutes. Sports Center has a report for you. Steve Lee and Trey Wingo standing by to bring you up to date as per usual on all the big news stories from the world of sports. Here's Earnhardt coming in closing on the back bumper of Jeff Gordon. The time by Earnhardt was faster than the front two cars. About a mile per hour faster. Dale Earnhardt has recorded top tens in seven of the last eight races. He has 14 top tens in 1999 versus eight last year after 22 races. I saw him in practice this afternoon during happy hour. He, he and Jeff Gordon, Gordon ran up on the Earnhardt, got him very loose and passed him. A few laps later, Earnhardt just got right up under the back bumper of Gordon like he's trying to do right now and trying to get back into the front Chevrolet. Race. And he did it in practice. Let's see if he can do it here. They're both masters with that. Well, the leader's going by Chad Little and John Deere car who had a terrific run going earlier on, but some kind of mechanical problem has it reared its ugly head. Here's Bobby Labonte, Mark Martin, and Ricky Rudd as they run fifth, sixth, and seventh. And Jimmy Spencer back there in eighth spot. And Earnhardt's going on the outside of Jeff Gordon, one and two for that second spot, and the crowd goes nuts. Pretty closed up here, well above the crowd, and in a big booth, but we could hear <laughs> the eruption of the crowd when Earnhardt took second position. And Jimmy Spencer goes by the six car of Mark Martin and puts Mark back in eighth spot. And that David Jarrett's got to be loving that because Mark can stay back there. <laughs> well, that was four more points. But uh, Mark now, lost. Earnhardt closes in on the leader of the race, Terry Labonte. Earnhardt has been unbelievable here tonight. Like he might have tested that high side again. He's getting a good run when he comes off of that high side. He's found something there that works. Now look at him get a run off the corner. He picks up going down the straightaway. He's got something working there. Now he gets right on the back bumper. They're pulling away from Jeff Gordon. A little bit. Not in a 
physical sense, but uh, determined is perhaps the correct word. Here he goes. We'll try that move he made on Jeff Gordon. Did this time work. he ripped to the inside. He got that run, but couldn't quite do it. He's, he's, he's setting him up. He is working. He's got something going. But I'll tell you, Terry Labonte is no slouch when it comes to knowing all of those tricks. Two short track experts here going at it. As see, Tony Stewart is closing on back on the back bumper of Jeff Gordon. Our pole center ran so strong earlier on. And now Stewart inside of Jeff Gordon in turn three. And Stewart goes to the third spot. I thought we'd get him right here. There he goes. he could possibly finish tonight with 38 at one more position. Here goes Earnhardt. He's on the inside. He's got position. He's going for the lead. Off of corner number four, Earnhardt will take the lead from Terry Labonte on lap 436. And look at this 20 car coming. Tony Stewart is on a mission. It's going to take him long to run him down. Racing out around Jeff Gordon. Good three-car battle going on here. Ernie Hart, Terry Labonte, and the rookie Tony Stewart. And Jeff Gordon not too far behind. Sixty-five laps make that 64 may sound like a lot, but it will go by very, very quickly. Don't stray too far from your television set, folks. We've got a good one at Bristol. over 55 laps to go here at Bristol. We have a new leader. Terry Labonte was able to get by Dale Earnhardt again. So put Terry in the front position. Sports Center is coming up at uh, the top of the hour in about 45 minutes from now with all the reports on the big stories in sports. Sports Center at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Okay, let's go back and show you how Labonte retook the lead from Dale Earnhardt. Got a great run off turn four. Goes in turn and Earnhardt goes in the corner, drifts up the hill, and Terry Labonte just drives in on the inside. And now has about a half second lead on uh, Earnhardt, and Tony Stewart is looking for second. John Curtin has a report from the back pit. Dale Earnhardt just radioed the crew and said, I think the tires may have given up on us. I think the front end, remember, he's been struggling with a tight condition in the middle of the runs, in the middle of the turns. And now he's got some laps on the tires, built up the uh, air pressure problem in that right front tire, causing the, the front end to want to slide through the turns. So he has got his, I think as Vic Carson said during the commercial break, he has a real handful out there. Started to come back a little bit on Terry Labonte. He was towards the end of that last uh, long run when he got by Terry. So maybe as time goes by, he started just working a little better to get by his teammate here. Which Skinner gives him room. Skinner now four laps down in 24. Cars running basically together, then back into fourth position, but some waiting for him to cross the line. Two point and a two and a quarter seconds behind the leader in the third place car, fourth place car of Jeff Gordon with Bobby Labonte hanging in there in fifth. And in sixth place is Ricky Rudd. Mark Martin has moved back to seventh, getting around the point of Jimmy Spencer. And here is fifth, sixth, and seventh. Martin. Bobby Labonte has never finished in the top five here at Bristol. He does have three top ten finishes, however. So if he stays where he is now or moves up, he will record his first top five finish in 
13 races at Bristol High Banks. Good working on Bobby Labonte. He wants that fifth place. Ricky Rudd has been a different part of his last couple of races. He has really been strong. Terry Levine just got around Ward Burton, put his back a lap down. And remember, Ward got back out in front of him on the restart, but now his tires are going away. Dale Jarrett has moved into the 38th position, but that is as far as he can progress. Dale Jarrett with a very disappointing and uh, points losing night. He had problems early on and then had a second encounter with the wall. And as you can see, as of right now, Mark Martin is 217 behind. He came in 314 behind him. So a loss, but still a rather comfortable lead here. There's second and third, Earnhardt and Tony Stewart, but Terry Labonte is the man in front at the Bristol Motor Speedway. August of 1995, Terry Labonte coming down for the checkered at Bristol, gets hit by Dale Earnhardt, slides across the line, wins the race, hits the wall big time. Coming into victory lane, a very tore up and smoking Kellogg Chevy. But Terry Labonte drove to victory lane that night four years ago. And we have the same two drivers running first and second here tonight. Labonte is the leader, Earnhardt running second. There's about two thirds of a second of the lead. And Earnhardt has Tony Stewart right on his back bumper. See there how far Labonte is ahead. That's got a lap car between them now. Here's a Hardy's field summary with the point standings as of now. No changes in the top five in points. But in the top ten, Labonte up one, Wallace down one. 30 laps to go here at Bristol Motor Speedway in the Goodies Headache Powder 500. Labonte has over a second lead on Earnhardt now. Moving away. Gordon has dropped three in the third seconds behind the leader. Coming up next at the top of the hour in about 35 minutes from right now. It's unbelievable how much this race changed from the beginning of the race until the end of the race. The cars that were really fast at the very beginning are now struggling to get around the racetrack. The cars that were fairly slow, not slow, but about a 10th to 15th place car at the beginning are now the leaders of the race, Terry Labonte and Dale Earnhardt. I wonder if that's uh, because of the change in condition of the track. It's gotten cooler, of course, as the evening has gone on. It looks like to me that the racetrack really came to Terry Labonte and it's really helped his effort to go to the front and guys like Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart it seemed to they seem to be struggling with the cool racetrack. Stewart has been working on Dale Earnhardt for several laps but just cannot get by the seven time Winston Cup champion. However. And remember, Benny, it was great communication between driver and crew chief that helped Terry Labonte find the handle here. They tightened the car up way too much, then they backed it off a little bit, then he made that out of sequence pit stop under yellow, backed it off a little more, they hit the setup, they made a slight error pressure adjustment on that last pit stop, and now Terry could be headed back to victory lane at Bristol. He won in Texas earlier this year after starting in fourth position. Terry Labonte started in ninth, and with 20, less than 23 laps to go as the leader of the race. That last lap, however, Dale Earnhardt was the fastest car among the top six. But Labonte 
he's involved in some traffic again as he goes to the inside of Bill Elliott. Bill is back in 36 position, 96 laps behind the leader, 97 now. Tell you what, Earnhardt is not that far back. One little slip by Labonte, and Earnhardt will be right there on his back bumper. But now we've got traffic on the inside, outside. That's going to hurt Earnhardt's progress just a little bit. And Terry Labonte has some very heavy traffic in front of him. Quite a while since DJ watched these guys just go blowing by him like that. He normally is the blowy, not the blower. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got that back to be the blower, not the blower. Tonight, they just been passed. That's easy. right. <laughs> 19 laps to go. Terry Labotti won this race in 84. He won this race as we saw a few minutes ago in 95. Now he has four lap cars between he and Earnhardt. That car's pretty easy. Joe Nemechek almost, they might have touched a little bit there. <laughs> and that slowed Earnhardt even more. Now he's 1.17 seconds behind. See Mike Skinner back there smoking in that Lowe's car. Started a few laps to go and still continues to smoke. Bristol, this is on board with Mike Skinner, the Lowe's car. Back bumper dripped off. Yep. It's smoking. Nothing unusual about this shot. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's Ward Burton back there, who is still in the 10th position, although he is a lap down. Here is Mike Skinner running right behind Dale Jarrett. Jarrett is out there completing laps, picking up Winston Cup points. With 13 laps to go, the interval is exactly one second between Labonte and Earnhardt. And Bobby Labonte has a problem. Bobby Labonte smoking going down into turn one. Smoking badly. So the sixth place car is in trouble here. Smoking badly all the way around the racetrack. And he's getting the black flag. And this is the onboard camera with Bobby, yeah. and boy, you can't see anything. And this man was in third place in the course. This is going to hurt him. He won't gain as many as he could have. He does not have a DNF in 1999 at all, and Jeremy Mayfield has crashed. And Tara Labonte, the leader, is spinning, and Dale Earnhardt takes the lead. What happened? You wonder if it's all from his brother's car, the 18 car, uh, Bobby Labonte. He went a lap there with that car smoking very badly. Andy Gray said this can't be happening. This cannot be happening. Less than 10 laps to go. The leader of the race, Terry Labonte, spins, putting Dale Earnhardt in the lead. Now then, will any of these guys make a pit stop? I would guess that maybe the guys that's on the tail of the lead lap will make a pit stop. Yeah, they'd have nothing to lose. Sterling Marlin, Jimmy Spencer. Well, maybe Terry Labonte now. He's, yep. he's way back there. He's back in the sixth position. And the smoking 18 car of Bobby Labonte is still out there. Well, he came down pit road, but when he saw that caution come out, he came back out to run these caution laps. And here comes Mark Martin and Terry Labonte in, and Sterling Marlin. So indeed, the guys that were running at the back of the lead lap are in. No ever. Well, Terry Labonte is very angry, did not say exactly what happened. Meanwhile, he's in here to get uh, four fresh tires, and then they'll send him back out. Martin also on pit road, Sterling Marlin pits behind the five. They'll try and get as much as they can with as few laps left as possible. Terry Labonte on his way, uh, he smokes them, uh, and that says a lot right there. Now, he took four tires. Mark Martin and Sterling Marlin only took right side tires. Down to John Kernan. 
Dale Earnhardt, your leader, did not come in and pit. He wanted to come and take on four tires. They told him, Dale, you are the seven-time NASCAR Winston Cup champion. You can do it. Well, he could very well do it now with less than eight laps to go. Here's a replay of Terry Labonte's spin up in turn three and four. Well, if you back, to, if you watch the 12th mark, Jeremy Mayfield was sitting against the inside retaining wall. NASCAR threw the caution flag. When they did that, Terry Labonte backed off to the caution, and Darrell Walker just touched it in the back bumper and spun the Kellogg's Chevrolet around. Oh, man. Now, here is Jeremy Mayfield's wreck from Wally Dollenbach's perspective. Field and you saw Labonte pass, and then there's the uh, apparent contact between Daryl Waltrip and Terry Labonte. So the 18 car now is a fire under it down in turn one. Well, he's, he's still he's moving again. Yep. Some way or another, he's got it going again. He's one lap down. Was all he is. And you see the, the fire the, underneath the car. The rear gear is gone, and that is on fire. That's the rear gear that's burning. Bobby, I think if I should go to the pits and find me a fire extinguisher, maybe put the fire out. Okay, get that he's, he's coming down the pits right now. He's going to listen to you. Okay, fire extinguisher, guys. Look, there we go. <laughs> Johnny on the spot. Because he can still salvage a, a decent finish out of this thing. There, there are... The 15th place car, which is Darrell Walter, is one lap down. So Bobby's going to, if he gets back, which he is going to come back out. So he'll come back out in 15th position. All right, here, here we see Terry Labonte. There we see Jeremy Mayfield spinning down in the corner. The caution flag comes out. Terry backs off of the caution flag, and DW goes in and just touches it in the back bumper. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. All right, we're going to be having green flag this time by. And Andy Graves, as you said, Benny, can't believe what just happened. This is a nightmare. All right, green flag. Five laps to go at Bristol Motor Speedway in the Goodies Headache Counter 500. It's Earnhardt, Stewart, Gordon, Martin, and Terry Labonte. The top five. Is Dale Earnhardt going to win this thing? Looks that way. Terry Labonte on the inside of Mark Martin. He goes by. He's got four new tires. Mark Martin had two new tires, and Ricky Rudd goes by him. Drops Mark back to the seventh position. And here comes Labonte by Gordon. He's, boy, wow. he's moving. Man on a mission. He really is on a mission. And, of course, he has those four fresh tires, as you say. He can get by Stewart, which it looks like he will. Man, oh, man, look at Labonte go. He's got second, and they're coming up on two laps to go. He's going to catch him. Can he pass him? This might be deja vu all over again, but in reverse. <laughs> and Labonte inside of Earnhardt. He taps him. Going into the third corner, he gets way down on the apron of the track, coming to the white flag. There's a leader change, and Labonte takes the lead. And meanwhile, Ricky Rudd trying to Oh, and Earnhardt spins him. spins him out. Oh, man. And Tony Stewart is involved in the crash, as is Mark Martin, Terry or Sterling Marlin, and several others. Dale Earnhardt takes the checkered flag. And Jimmy Spencer, Spencer ran second. Earnhardt's 73rd career win, second win of 99. He won at Talladega, and his ninth Bristol win, fourth at night. Here's the replay. Here we see the contact between the three and the five. Terry Labonte stands on the gas, and all these cars get in the smoke. There's Ricky Rudd crashing into him. There's Tony Stewart, Mark Martin, Sterling Marlin. There we see the contact. Yeah, that's too bad. It's, uh... There will be talk about this one for a long time. John Kernan with Richard Childress. And Richard. <laughs> 
Man, what a way to win one. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be talking about the, the little move over there, but uh, congratulations. You know, I, I couldn't tell where I was at, what happened. All I seen him spinning when he come around. You know, I'm happy for the GM Good Ranch team. You know, we needed a win, pulled it off, tickled it up for Dale Earnhardt. What about the effort that the guys back here on the crew did pitting on the backstretch? Because that is such a handicap. You know, we would have probably pitted there at the end, but it wasn't no way we could pit when you on the, with the backstretch speed and everything. There was no way that we could come out and beat them. We were just going to lose three or four spots. So, uh, wasn't no way we could do it. All right, congratulations, Richard. Dale Earnhardt is in victory lane. It's the lowest start ever for a Bristol winner, and only the second time that a driver has pitted from the backstretch and won. Davey Allison did it from the 19th starting position in the spring of 1990. Circle Jerry Punch. Well, Dale Earnhardt climbs out with his ninth victory at Bristol. And Dale, that's what Bristol's all about. Take us through those last couple laps. Well, we knew we didn't get tires, and I didn't know who got tires behind us. All I knew is I needed to protect that bottom and try to go. And uh, Terry got into me in the middle of three and four, and I was going to get back to him and just rattle him. I wasn't going to wreck him, but I got to him and he turned him around. So. Didn't mean to really turn around, meant to rally his cage, Joe. You had an outstanding effort coming from 26 to the front. The track come to you tonight. Well, not really. The, the car was still a little tight center. And, yeah, I don't know. This is a this is a heck of a way to win. I'd like to beat Terry and uh, race him back, you know, side by side. But like I say, I got into him a little bit to, to get you know get by him and and, I, and it got him loose and spun him out. But, the Good Ranch team, Richard Childers, all the guys, they did a great job. You know, we just uh, lucky to be there at the end. On the last restart, Dale, it looked like you went, you were able to charge and go by Labonte, and he went back by you. Did your car, did your tires heat up a little bit and go away? On the last restart, he had stickers, didn't he? I don't, I don't, you know, he just uh, could be, he'd, he'd have beat us if, you know, I was going to just try to shake him and get under him. I, I wasn't going to try to wreck him. All right, Dale Earnhardt, obviously happy in victory, but mixed emotions. Doesn't like to be able to turn anybody, including his buddy Terry Labonte. As Richard Childers comes over and gives him a big hug, and now the celebration will continue. The Intimidator's 73rd career victory. Bob? Quite a night here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Terry Labonte, Dale Earnhardt battling for the win of the race right down almost to the checkered flag. Here was the contact between the two in turn number two on the last lap. Terry Labonte spinning around, collecting several others behind him, including Tony Stewart, who is running in second position. Here's another angle. The contact sends Terry Labonte, who had taken the lead away from Dale Earnhardt, sends him around in a big plume of smoke and it resulted in Dale Earnhardt going to Victory Lane. That's the Goodies Headache Powder 500 at Bristol Motor Speedway. We'll have more from here in a moment. Well, it was a very controversial finish to the Goodies Headache Powder 500 here at Bristol with Dale Earnhardt and Terry Labonte having contact on the last lap. Labonte spins, Earnhardt wins the race. And there was a lot of other activity in the world of sports today, the college football openers. Also, how about home runs from Sosa or McGuire? Well, you'll be able to get the re complete report from Wingo and Levy coming up next on SportsCenter in about 18 minutes from right now. NASCAR is looking at the videotape to uh, determine what, if anything, will happen, but there is the very wrecked car of Terry Labonte. Here's a replay going down to one, and Labonte drives that baby in hard. We see sparks from the right front, and there's a contact from Earnhardt and the good wrench Chevrolet. Around he goes. Bill Weber's with Terry Labonte. And we're back here behind the rig, and Terry Labonte has emerged and is talking to several members of the media, explaining exactly what happened in the closing laps of the race and even in the final lap. And first of all, Terry, uh, a great run for you tonight. Take us through the closing laps. Well, we were, our car was awesome there, and, uh, you know, the flag came out. And I'll, uh, uh, with 66, what's his name, turned me around down there. And 
I don't know what do you I mean I mean you know there was oil in the track and the caution was out and just wrecked me and so then we got new tires came back out and I got wrecked again so it wasn't my night you got the four fresh tires you came out you were very quick you passed a number of cars you passed the three then walk us from that stage to the end of the race well I passed him down in front straight away and he, he hit me in the corner down there and one and two and turned me around and that's about it obviously he said he planned to get up to you had no intention of taking you out he never has any intention of taking anybody out it just happens that way okay well terry labani had a great run here tonight certainly not the finish he was hoping for bob thanks for talking with us terry it, uh, <laughs> it certainly was a uh, controversial finish to say the least and i don't think there have been very many fans moved from their seats no that be there's a few people leaving most of them are just just sitting here, standing here, numb. Stunned. No, yeah. Stunned, right. Yeah. Well, Jimmy Spencer, according to the uh, unofficial finish, finishes second. Ricky Rudd third. Terry Labonte fourth. And Tony Stewart finished in fifth position. More from Bristol in a moment. ESPN's live coverage of the Goodies Head Encounter 500 from Bristol Motor Speedway being brought to you by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. By Brewery Fresh Budweiser, official beer of NASCAR. Hey, race fans, this Bud's for you. And by AC Delco Automotive Parts. AC Delco, if you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. Well, the full moon is out, and <laughs> it's been one of those nights here at Bristol. Coming up next, Sports Center at the top of the hour at about 12 minutes from right now. John Kernan is with second place finisher Jimmy Spencer. And on that last caution, Jimmy was one of the guys who came in. He took on right side tires. And Jimmy, I guess it paid off in the way of a second place finish. Congratulations. I'm trying to file a three second, even a one second penalty to Earnhardt. You know, it'd be really <laughs> nice, you know. That was a great finish. Uh, you know, Donnie and Travis made a great call on two tires, made our car hooked up awesome. You know, we were eighth at the, at the start. And to come back and get second there is just absolutely incredible. And, Team Winston guys, Food City, Maglai people's worked hard with us all year long. I'll probably come back with these uh, bunch of hooligans, as I call them. I love every one of them, and, and they worked really hard. And, and tonight really showed it, I think, because uh, it just it did something to them. You know, they know I'm coming back, and they all wanted me to come back, and that means more to me than anything. Great second place finish for Jimmy Spencer. Another guy with a great run, Ricky Rudd, is standing with Jerry Punch. And we caught up with Ricky actually in the media center talking to some of the media here. Ricky, 35th to third, great run, but I got to ask you, you were right behind the five and the three, and uh, we saw your car inching into the picture there in the smoke. What, uh, how did you see it? Well, there's definitely contact there. I mean, you see the video on it. Uh, Earnhardt pretty much just took Terry out. There's no other way to put it, but that uh, you know, was the last lap. He pretty much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, Jimmy's talking about what happened to me at Sears Point one time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. No shouting from the gallery now, Jimmy. You had your turn. Let's let, let, let Ricky finish. Yeah, yeah what happened, we won the race and came across the finish line first, but a similar incident, and uh, we were taking away, the victory was taken away, we finished second, so Jimmy's campaigning to get, uh, get the win. But, uh, you know, it was the last lap. Uh, yeah, clearly, Earnhardt took Terry out of the shame. Uh, we had tires. Uh, Terry took tires. Uh, Earnhardt was pretty much a sitting duck. Um, you know, he was going to have his hands full trying to hold us off with them tires, but the, the good thing was he had very few laps left. Uh, last lap, you know, call it what you want to. It was close racing. Uh, Shame for Terry. Shame for us, really, because I was going to follow Terry through that hole. I was right behind Terry, about a half car length back. Uh, when he pushed, uh, we were going to run second if that wreck had not happened. Uh, so we ended up running third. Yeah, third with a tore up race car. We got in the middle of that uh, with Terry there at the end. And uh, it's a shame, but it was good racing. I'm tickled to death. Uh, tore up or not tore up, uh, the way our season's gone, it was, a, it was a great finish. The guys worked really hard. Mike McSwain, all the guys on the crew, Pro Motor, Pete back at the shop, all the guys. Uh, we've been coming. We've had uh, four top tens, really should have in a row, but uh, circumstances kept us out. This is the first time we actually got us a finish, so we're real tickled to death with that. A big night may help the sponsor search, and Ricky, 650 a start. He finishes third. Let's check in with Bill Weber. Well, the fabulous rookie run for Tony Stewart continues. You want to be sad, but you have to be happy, I guess, with that outcome. Well, I think it'll be easier to be happy tomorrow, but right now I'm so mad I could spit nails. But, uh, you know, Home Depot car was great all night. We just... About the middle of the race, we lost the grip on the racetrack a little bit and couldn't get it to turn the last third of the corner. So, uh, 
you know, just there wasn't much I could tell Greg to do because uh, it was just a spot on the racetrack where we'd build up some rubber on the track and going across that rubber was what was making the car uh, real tight. For the longest time tonight, Tony, you must have thought this <laughs> was the night. Uh, I mean, we we were out there in the first half of the race taking it so easy and, uh, you know, even taking our time with lap cars and never really charged uh, up to the cars. I just, uh, you know, when I got there, then I did what I had to do to get by. But, uh, you know, I thought, man, this is the night. But uh, it just shows, you know, 500 laps here, things can change in a hurry. A lot of guys have never gotten a top five at Bristol. Tony Stewart gets one in his second run here. And he led 225 of the 500 laps here tonight. Well, Dale Jarrett's lead now with Mark Martin reduced by more than 100 is now 213. Bobby Labonte is in third position and will be right back. Okay. here at Bristol Motor Speedway signifying the end of a, an exciting controversial race here tonight. Dale Earnhardt emerges as the winner with Jimmy Spencer finishing in second. Tony Stewart, you see the double yellow arrows there indicating that he led the most laps here tonight. This is the unofficial finish. Terry Labonte ended up in eighth position, could not make it back to the start finish line after the big crash. Todd Bodine with a good finish in 15th spot. Rusty Wallace ends up in 18th. You and see Bobby Labonte all the way down there in 27th position with that rear end problem that he had there that caught on fire. Slick Poston will be very unhappy to know one of his gears burned up here at Bristol. And the rest of the uh, field, you see that Dale Jarrett ended up in 38th position, spent considerable amount of time back behind the wall getting the rear end of the car fixed. Well, next week we'll be at uh, Darlington Speedway for, first of all, Bud Pole qualifying on Friday at 3.30 on the Deuce. The Duraloo 200 for the NASCAR Bush Series is at 1 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. And our happy hour coverage at 6 o'clock Saturday evening, all of those programs on the Deuce. Then on Sunday, RPM Today is at 11.30. Bill Weber has the NASCAR Today pre-race show at 12.30 preceding the Labor Day tradition, Labor Day weekend tradition, the Pepsi Southern 500 at 1 o'clock here on ESPN next Sunday afternoon. And RPM tonight will be at 8 o'clock on the Deuce next Sunday. Well, coming up next, Sports Center. Not only uh, other activity going on in the world of sports, but we'll have updates from here at Bristol. Should anything change, what a night it has been. Tony Stewart was the original leader of the race. Dale Jarrett got in trouble very, very early. There was one exciting moment after another. Jerry Nadeau with a controversial incident with Dale Jarrett. He spent some time in the penalty box. Jarrett with about 162 laps behind the wall before they got the car finally fixed and back out on the racetrack. Ray Evernham watched as his driver Jeff Gordon led for lead for 48 laps here tonight. But there was more spinning and crashing out on the racetrack and a lot of pounding out of the sheet metal back behind the wall. Dale Earnhardt, well, he drove to victory here tonight, but it was a very controversial finish as he and Labonte had contact on the last lap of the race, sending Terry spinning and Dale Earnhardt to victory lane. That's the story from Bristol Motor Speedway. We'll see you next week at Darlington, South Carolina. This is Bob Jenkins. So long, everyone. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Proud to celebrate another.